Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to Broughton Park FC here in Manchester for the second round of the Autumn International Series. I'm Jack Harrison. It's a pleasure to be talking to you all today. Uh, we've got a slightly different lineup for you today than we had two weeks ago. And the game we're actually starting with uh, currently here that you are now watching is uh, the Women's Open England Bs versus the England Women's uh, 27s. Uh, this one, of course, not a test match, but a good warm up for the rest of the day. We've got uh, a great uh, set of matches coming uh, for you today. Of course, our three competitions being the men's, women's and mix with teams representing England, Wales, Scotland and Ireland. Uh, promises to be a great day. The weather is currently very good. It's lovely and still with some sunshine. Uh, and we hope that uh, we can see some great example of touch rugby for you today. Um, so as mentioned, the match on at the moment is a sort of pre uh, preliminary warm up match for the England uh, women's opens bees who are playing in white from left to right. And we've got the England women's 27s in blue playing from right to left. Um, unfortunately, today we're uh, slightly short of commentators, so not every game today is going to be able to be commentated on, unfortunately. But we will be uh, giving you every game live with a video feed so you can watch any game that is happening on Pitch 1 today when you want to. Uh, our schedule for today, the first game... Uh, in our international series after this game at 10.30, we'll see uh, England take on Scotland in the mixed open, uh, followed then by England versus Scotland in the men's open, and then at 12.10 is Wales versus Scotland in the women's open. But we've got three matches from each competition happening today, and as I say, it promises to be a great day. England in all three competitions, managing to win all of their games, so looking to further develop on that front um, but we did did see some great great players and great teams happening through uh, two weeks ago um, some newer players newer teams coming up into uh, new divisions and new squads a lot of junior players rising up through the ranks and uh, they definitely showed some uh, great prowess on the touch pitch two weeks ago and this will be another great opportunity for them to develop to uh, develop today as well um, so as mentioned, we're going to leave you now with the feed of the women's England Women's Open Bees and England Women's 27s playing one another. But at 10.30, as mentioned, we will see the first mixed open game between England and Scotland. And I hope to join you for at least a bit of that. Thank you.
that we need to do.
Quick turnaround and then there'll be a countdown to the second half. Manchester. The uh, game you're watching currently is the women's opens bees from England playing the England women's 27s. Uh, very much a preliminary match for the rest of the games we've got today. Uh, and commentary team today. Um, as a result, we can't bring you a, a commentary feed for every game today, but you will get a live video feed. So please stay with us and watch uh, throughout the day. Uh, we will commentate on as many games as we are able to. So that's half time in this game. There'll be another 20 minutes to follow very shortly. Um, and the game following uh, this one will be the uh, mixed open England versus Scotland game here on pitch one. Uh, at 11.20 we're going to see men's open England versus Scotland. And then at 12.10 we are going to see women's open Wales versus Scotland here too. So hope you very much are enjoying the feed. Leave your comments, follow England Touch, follow your country. And uh, it'd be great to have you with us uh, throughout the day as we get towards the final end of this competition here in Manchester. Yeah, I watched that back. Yeah. It was, it was one of those ones that... It was not just 
30 seconds for the uh, cage to restart after half time on pitch one.
players and officials for the next game on pitch one. Uh, you're coming up to one minute.
Good morning once again, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to uh, Broughton Park FC here in what is actually very sunny Manchester uh, for the second round of the Autumn International Series between England, Wales, Scotland and Ireland. I'm Jack Harris. It's a pleasure to be uh, commentating for you today. Uh, unfortunately, won't be available all day, but uh, we'll give as much commentary as uh, we can. Just finished there watching the England women's opens bees playing the England women's 27s as our little warm-up match for this morning. Uh, but the match we are about to show you in a handful of minutes' time is mixed open, which is going to be England versus Scotland. Uh, and then shortly after 11.20 will be men's open, which again is England versus Scotland. Uh, so let's talk a bit about what we're going to see in the mixed open and a bit of uh, a flashback to what we had two weeks ago. Um, we saw some uh, new faces, some new players from all squads actually. A lot of junior players now coming up into the ranks of the open squads, which is uh, a pleasure to see. And we saw some really, really good touch rugby uh, two weeks ago, specifically in the mixed open division. Uh, currently sat atop is England who won all three of their games uh, two weeks ago uh, second place is Wales um, Fortunately, Ireland don't have uh, a mixed open squad in this competition this year so their space is taken by the England mixed 30s to make up the numbers uh, and Scotland uh, mixed open a very new and fresh side who I'm sure uh, will grow and grow and certainly showed a lot of potential two weeks ago uh, currently sat in fourth place when these two met two weeks ago um, it was 11-2 to England but I'm sure we're going to see a much much closer game today um, when we talk about other uh, competitions we've got going on today so again mention the men's open we've also at 12-10 got the women's open uh, the game you'll see at 12-10 is Wales versus Scotland 
Uh, heading into the afternoon at one o'clock, men's open again. We've got England versus Ireland. Uh, it was a great match two weeks ago, and we're hoping to bring you that uh, live. It was um, Ireland was certainly the squad in the men's open who pushed England the hardest, and uh, I'm sure they'll want to go out for revenge um, this week. After that, at 1.50, once again mixed open, you'll see Wales versus Scotland. That's a repeat of the European Championship final uh, from uh, three years ago now, uh, where Scotland narrowly won in a very famous drop-off. Uh, both sides, again, sporting some newer talent, newer players, and uh, they, once again, I'm sure, will put on a great show for us there. At 2.40, Women's Open, uh, England versus Scotland. Scottish side there, again, um, some new talent in that side, but they showed some real, real promise two weeks ago. Team that loved to play on the second phase, uh, certainly weren't willing to wait for any defence, and uh, were willing to play some good touch rugby. So hopefully we'll see a great game there. At 3.30, Men's Open, the final Men's Open game of the day is Scotland versus Ireland. At 4.20, we will see the final Women's Open game, which is England versus Wales. And our final game of the day at 5.10 will be England versus Wales in the Mixed Open, which will promise to be a great game from there. But back to the live action. 10.30 now, we're going to see the Mixed Open game versus uh, England versus Scotland as you can see the Scottish already preparing a wonderful welcome for their team uh, as I mentioned I'm Jack Harris and hoping to be here with you commentating for the first half of this game and uh, hopefully be a lovely way to start the day for us today And we're off already here in Manchester, seeing England playing in white and red, going from left to right. Uh, Scotland in the blue, currently defending as England coming on their first attack here. Excellent touch initially made there by Scotland, but uh, has unfortunately been called offside for that one. So England will get six more here at the side of the field that they're going to want to be in. Lovely set up there. It's a wonderful dive. And England are already on the board. It's a wonderful, wonderful dive there from England. And England already now one score to the good. See there. Wonderful diving from Gabe Pennington. Scott now going to look to want to get back on the scoreboard here make sure they stay in touch with England uh, making some good yards already number 18 Jamie Carruth calling the shots here along with number 15 Findlay Smith it's a good short setup the sweep is good it's a lovely long ball but the touch is made and that is six touches for Scotland it's a wonderful short setup there from Scotland uh, lovely vision there from Jamie Carruth uh, as he tries to play the long ball there to winger number 16 uh, Alice Malcolm Wilkinson great catch but it was six touches as England come again now it's a half court there number 25 from England uh, Ed Hayward going for the scoop and now trying to make the touch here as Scotland makes some good yards towards their box And what we're being called back for here, unfortunately, as much as the good yards were made by Scotland, our uh, foot was in touch, so it will be a turnover at their box to England. It's a really strong English side here. A uh, number of players within the English side are university-based players, but that's unfortunate for England here. Uh, Isabel Hobson not quite able to get a hand on that one. Scotland, though, looking to come very quickly back at them straight away. Alan Caffeine now along with Rory Grant in the middle here. It's a good quickie setup from Rory Grant looking back 
And they'll get six more here. It's all Gabe Pennington could do. Had to get the slap down there on that one. So now Scotland have six to use in this seven metre zone. Looking to get that one back. Again, it's another quickie setup here, but it's a turn back from Scotland who have got the space. It's a great pass, great vision. Is it away in time? Wonderful score there from Scotland. Brilliant, brilliant play. So you've got the initial quickie setup here from uh, Alan Clefine. But watch, he turns back. It's a brilliant pass out to the link, number eight, uh, Ewan Campbell. And then the wonderful score there by number two, uh, Tutu, who has done a brilliant job there to score that we're at one all here in this mixed open game between England and Scotland England now playing well Teddy Brooks linking up very nicely with Dan Mayo as they uh, look to call the shots between themselves here passing up to the link number 10 Matty Maynard and back trying to draw out the Scottish defence here Oh, it's a brilliant pass back from Matthew Mayo. Uh, unfortunately, though, is a late pass, that one. It was a lovely pass out the back from Matthew Mayo, but uh, just went a bit too late. So Scotland now have the penalty and will drive towards their box. But uh, it's loss of control there for Scotland, who are now scrambling to come off the box to make sure they're back in time as England will get the ball back into the half that they want to be in. Matthew Mayo, Matty Maynard, again working very well with one another. Alice Somerville there, also playing link too. England doing very well here to push the ball as wide as they can. They're not keeping it too central. Teddy Brooks now, oh, that's a fumble unfortunately. He's looking to set up a short play for uh, Matty Maynard, but hasn't quite worked out for them there. Scotland again are going to come to the box, but it's good defence here from Matty Mayo and number 12 there, uh, who is Lauren Torley out on the wing here, having to defend the Scottish sub box. Scotland though, on their way once again, Alan Caffeen calling the shots in with number eight, Ewan Campbell. And looks like we've got a breakthrough here. What wonderful vision that was from Rory Grant. Let's watch that one again. I don't think England were expecting to uh, have to defend something like that so quickly. But here on the link position, unfortunately slightly tight there. And there's just a large gap that opens up between the two middles from England. And uh, we get Rory Grant noticing it straight away. And Scotland will now go one up at 2-1 here in this mixed open game. So we've got Anna Crossley working very well in the middle there. With Jamie Ironside and Gabe Pennington. Gabe Pennington on the ball now. It is fifth touch though, or sixth coming, so they are going to have to do something. But it uh, doesn't quite work for them there. Scottish defence holds out very, very well. Again, Anna Crossley. And Lauren Torley working very well to cover this side of Scott the Scottish sub box. Scotland running off the box well, as we see. Number 20, Jared Binstead, looking to make some good yards along with Finlay Smith, but unfortunately is caught there. Made some good yards there, Scotland. They're playing with some very free flowing play here that England, I don't think, are expecting. And uh, they're going to have to op open their eyes a bit to the play that Scotland are doing um, to want to defend in their area well. England are going towards their box. And we see the fresh legs coming on now. It's wonderful metres there made as Isabel Hobson plays the ball off the floor. Ed Hayward now looking to scoop once again. Goes back to the near side. It's a great catch from Isabel Hobson. But... Uh, can't quite get to the line on this occasion, but it's a good play there from England. Ed Hayward, some great eyes there to see where the space was. And uh, the ball finished far away from Scottish sub box. And as I say that, as Scotland tried to get it back near to the sub box, they've unfortunately lost the ball there. So England now have six touches to play with. Number 16 on the link there for England. 
26, apology. That's Danielle Evans now in the middle at the moment. Ed Hayward and Charlie Thompson trying to play in the middle. Both ex Exeter University players. It's a sweep of play here. What a dive that was. Wonderful finish that from Charlie Thompson. Look at that. Watch the small amount of space that he has to get into here. Charlie is a very tall player and uh, he can dive forever. But he's come on a sweep here. It's wonderfully played. Step back and I don't think the Scottish defence were expecting him to... Uh, dive in the way he did there it's a wonderful score wonderful finish off a sweet play from England as we now draw level with just over eight minutes gone in this mixed open game so Scotland gonna look to come back now see what they can get back but in is Philip in the middle here along with Peter Walker she quickly play off the floor to Philip well touch there by Matty Maynard Number 12, Lucy Preston playing at the link there for Scotland. Well, plenty of space out on the right here. Once again, Scotland, oh, so they were looking to try that play again, set up the quickie, but actually then turn back off the pass and play the long ball into the space on the right. Uh, didn't quite work out for Scotland on that occasion. But uh, that's where the space was as England now push their box. Isabel Hobson along with... Uh, Alice Somerville working this left side here on the Lincoln wing channels. So we see now Gabe Pennington and Angus Goff in the middle there. And it looks like, once again, England have noticed the space beautifully. Referees are going to have a discussion here, though. Not sure what it's about at the moment. OK, and the score will be given. So what a question there, whether it was a late pass from England, but it's a wonderful score nevertheless. Uh, pulling Scotland this way and that, and actually went back into the space, which was on their own sub-box side. As England now go one up to 3-2. Ten minutes gone in this first half. Scotland again now looking to get one back as much as they can. Alan Caffeen and Rory Grant once again working well in the middle. Quickly set up initially. The space is closing for them here on this left-hand side though. I think they're going to want to talk to each other about setting up that quickie play more in the centre of the pitch to give them options with the space. They're working this far side quite hard and unfortunately doesn't come to much. Gabriella Adams having to take the sixth touch there. I think Scotland will be slightly happy that they've uh, stopped with the ball on the far side for England. But England are looking like they're going to go direct here. It's a wonderful break that from uh, Angus Goff. And uh, once again, Ed Hayward and Charlie Thompson working the middle here. Daniel Evans out there. Also now pushing the metres. Fourth touch. Daniel Evans on the ball. Looking to set it up here. There it is. So now got the long ball coming looking for the switch back and I think somehow England got those balls away I'm as surprised as you are ladies and gentlemen but uh, let's watch that one again so you've got the beautiful long play set up there from Danielle Evans it's a lovely pass out once again to Charlie Thompson switch back into Gay Pennington unfortunately we uh, Alan Caffeen there couldn't quite make the touch and England were through OK, so Scotland now, two down, looking to come back here. I'm sure they'll want to try and get that flowing play back into the game as they were playing in the first five minutes. In the middles here, Jamie Carruth. It's a good setup here, looking back for the wide space. Can Scotland score? Yes, they can. Absolutely wonderful. Beautiful set of space out there. So initially setting up a fake sweeper play. It's come back there from uh, Jamie Carruth and it's scored once again by Tutu. Now, Tutu, if you watch this back, I do apologise about pronouncing your surname correctly, but I'm going to do my best. It's uh, Osif or Dun Dunrin, but I'm going to stick with Tutu if that's all right. But a wonderful finish, wonderful, wonderful finish there. As Scotland now close the gap to one. It's lovely eyes that from Anna Crossley made made the meters and saw Isabel Hobson out there on the wing in the space. Fortunately, 
did not the pass did not quite come off Scotland now though looking to come back once again as they push towards the box oh, well covered here but uh, it's a loss of control that for Scotland as they went to the box there just needed a bit more control number six Callum Serene apologies Srinan England again now with Anna Crossley and Angus Goff trying to work the middles here and a wonderful junior player coming up through the ranks it's wonderful to see her playing there very confidently in the middles as well uh, England currently at the moment actually playing with two male players and four female players which is um, a slightly unusual mixed touch is perfectly allowable within the rules you've just got to have at least one male after that you can have up to five female players on the pitch but um, as I say so England currently playing with a 4-2 mix Gay okay, Pennington Angus Goff in the middle here as we've got Anna Crossley and Lauren Torley on the near side here defending the Scottish box both of them there Scotland have made some yards here though that's a wonderful wonderful touch that from Jamie Ironside that was absolutely brilliant there but it was a wonderful break by the Scottish number eight uh, Ewan Campbell possibly thought he was in there but it's well touched by England. Scotland now working the centre here number 15 Findlay Smith alongside number 18 Jamie Carruth sweeper play coming the sweep goes it's a lovely sweep and a long ball oh but it looks like Scotland are going to get the ball back. It's a beautiful long ball there from Jared Binstead out to Tutu. Wonderful uh, vision that. And again, Tutu, the winger in space. England offside, unfortunately, though. So Scotland will be getting six more, which they'll be very happy with to see if they can level the score here. Jamie Carruth and Jared Binstead calling the shots. Oh! It's a temp great attempt to dive that from number 15, Finley Smith. He saw the space and tried to go for it. Had the touches to use. Jared Binstead trying to work the space there on the link side. Short play now coming from Scotland. The loop back's there and the space. Oh, that's unfortunate for Scotland. Was a forward pass as well, unfortunately. But again, beautiful vision from Scotland. They're really working the wing really, really well here. Number 11 out there, Maria Garcia. Basanta unfortunately passes forward as I say so uh, didn't come off for Scotland but wonderful wonderful vision and England with a mistake here that means Scotland are going to get the ball back and England are going to have to defend six more here this uh, set this pod been on the pitch for quite a while now and uh, I'm sure Scotland who also look to make some substitutions themselves Callum Srinan now working this near side left ball isn't quite there and Scotland going to be careful here. Dump made within the seven, which meant a lot easier for England to defend that. And already now, using up the number of touches. Number 17 in his Philip, alongside Karen Srinan. And again, looking to now work this space wide. Pass wasn't brilliant, but as we see, and that is what was possibly inevitable. Peter Walker going in for a good score there. And uh, actually apologies I'm gonna have to revoke that last comment it was a wonderful touch evidently by number 23 from England uh, Daisy Pank was, uh, managed to get a touch there to stop the score wonderful diving to the finish to uh, to stop the score so England now with the ball brought on new set of legs and we're gonna see Gay Pennington try and go through the center here on the scoop uh, but as the half has been touched so once again turn over now to Scotland again Lauren Torley working this Scottish sub box well out there for brilliant defensive skills so we now see Scotland number eight Ewan Campbell there and once again Alan Clefine looking for something here it's a good scoop there from number one Rory Grant oh what are we going to see here hold on a moment so we've got a touch claimed there by number 25 from England Ed Hayward referees just discussing whether they believe the ball was gone before the touch 
And uh, unfortunately, again, going to be another another score. And uh, touch was made first, so uh, was it in it playing in Scotland's favour there. Unfortunately, uh, was wonderful play though, I must say, from the Scottish side. Rory Grant and Alan Caffeen again, really working very well together in the middle and noticing where the space is. Isabel Hobson passing off to Matty Maynard. Teddy Brooks, it's a wonderful touch that from Scotland number one. And Matty Maynard looking now to try and go. He's found the space. He is the half, though. Ooh. It's a wonderful... Referees are going to have to discuss again. But uh, it was, yeah, so it's a wonderful touch that made by Rory Grant on Teddy Brooks just before that ball got put down. England made some wonderful yards there. Oh, OK. What are we seeing here? OK, ladies and gentlemen, what we're seeing actually is a, it's a penalty to Scotland here on the 10. I think for um, a late pass that was the last one before uh, England attempted to score there. Uh, Scotland just questioning the level of touching there from Matty Maynard. Referee Matt Emerson just reminding him to lead with the hands. We always want to see leading with the hands in touch. Ladies and gentlemen, wonderful diving touch there from Matty Maynard again. He's going to keep his eyes open here. And uh, the attempted pass there from Finley Smith not quite getting there to Maria Garcia. Uh, sorry, apologies, Alice Malcolm Wilkinson, who's the winger on the near side here. Scotland are doing well to put England under pressure, especially when driving to their box. As we see now, Isabel Hobson playing on the wing side here. It's a lovely pass back that. Uh, to really make some metres for England. See new centre pod once again. Coming on. Gabe Pennington looking for the space here. He's found it. Can he get the pass away? And he has done. Beautifully, beautifully played that. Just have a look at that again. Gay Pennington goes through the gap and we easily, easily see there number 12, Lauren Torley, who's been out on this wing near side for most of the game. Um, coming into the space here and uh, scoring the final score. So that means then, ladies and gentlemen, we reach half time where it's 5-3 to England. And uh, that is 20 minutes over. I think you'll agree. It's a one, been a wonderful half. Uh, very close. Seen some great play from both sides. Scotland really, really good at noticing where the space is. Uh, and England playing a very fast game, as they normally would. And I'm sure the second half is going to be a corker. I unfortunately need to go and get myself prepared to uh, referee in the next time slot. Uh, so there will be no commentary for the second half of this game. We'll still keep giving, keeping on giving you the live feed. Uh, so you've got 20 minutes remaining of this mixed open game between England and Scotland. And then after this at 11.20 you will see the men's open game between England and Scotland. And then at 12.10 I'll be back with you for first women's open game of the day between Wales and Scotland. Uh, enjoy the rest of this game ladies and gentlemen and I will see you a bit later.
Players and officials, this is your two minute warning. Players and officials, two minutes. Players and officials, this is your one minute warning. Players and officials, one minute. Players and officials stand by.
Players and officials, this is your two minute warning. Players and officials, two minutes. a Nike Air ladies shoe, so if you're short of a white light, Nike Air shoe, then uh, we have one here.
Ladies and officials, stand by.
Ladies and officials, two minute warning. Ladies and officials, two minute warning. As we approach the second half, this is your one minute warning. Seconds. 
Players and officials, stand by.
that game to an end the uh, next game five minute warning tap off is a hooter so if you are on your pictures for the next game start making your way over i'll give you a two minute warning and your one minute one as per usual
so just to let you know at three o'clock I believe there is some pitches on uh, some games being played on pitch two and three so uh, three o'clock games around that time uh, you will have to go around the pitches uh, between us just to make you aware of that there is food being served at the clubhouse if you want something to eat there is lunch time there's some food being served there Players and officials, this is your two minute warning. This is your two minute warning for the next tap off. If you are due on your pitches, please get yourselves in your sub boxes. Final talk should be dealt with. Players and officials, a uh, 30 second warning, please take to the field, ready to play. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Welcome to Borton Park FC here in Manchester. Uh, it has been a great day so far. Lovely and sunny. I'm Jack Harris, and for some silly reason today, I offered to commentate whilst also attempting to referee. So if I sound out of breath, I apologise. I've just finished refereeing a game. You join us now at the kickoff of the first women's Opens match of the day between Scotland and Wales. Uh, forgive me. Scotland playing left to right in blue, but Wales currently in possession in red. Score currently nil-nil after well, only less than a minute. It's been an interesting game, this one. Both teams sporting some new talent and uh, getting a great opportunity to play with one another for the first time now that we can once again play international touch games. It's a wonderful interception here from Scotland. Number two from Scotland. And that is Hannah Trisp scoring a wonderful intercept try and Scotland are going to be on the first on the board here. Let's have a watch of that again. Really great work. Really, really great work. And that was after, unfortunately, Scotland fumbling the ball off the tap off. So now Wales in possession, looking to get one on the scoreboard themselves, as we see Joanne Jones working very nicely with Serge Ballot. Serge Ballot on the sweep here, as she looks to come round, squeezed slightly to the left hand side here with Shania Masters to her link. And Megan Jones on the left wing here, wearing number 11. So good setup initially. 
and Wales will get six more Scotland offside at the touch there so Joanne Jones and Sarah Ballett Keris I should say looking to set something up here working together got some good wide options here Scotland still quite tight in the defence quickie play Sarah so Ballett looking to dive in it's uh, brilliantly covered there by the Scotland number 10 Emma Robson again it's another quickie play so it's ballot now is there any space there not really Scotland staying very tight here in that mid channel and now the final touch and Wales not really aware of the touch count there so it's the quick pass away and unfortunately have not made uh, it work on this occasion Scotland now in possession and Wales will be marched 10 more for not giving the ball back immediately so Scotland will get the meters here so it looks like they're preparing to head to the sub box yeah as we get the Scottish players coming around sweep a bit slow there from Scotland it's a bit scrambled now as number 18 Leia Gladding looks to make the initial dump with Scotland fresh set on now number six Carmen Cree and number three Suzanne Brownie making good meters here now last touch they're gonna to have to do something oh and not quite collected there by Carmen Cree unfortunately uh, but Scotland will be happy they even made it down to the far end of the pitch after what was initially quite a slow start to the subbing move and Wales now doing exactly the same Shania Masters coming round as well as number 15 Amberley Ruck it's lovely meters made this side look at that it's going to be slowed down here slightly though number eight Ballot making good meters but it was slowed so Wales are going to, have to set something up here on the fifth touch and it's brilliantly shut by Scotland there wonderful defense was prepared for that one straight away pass well away there by Scotland it was beautifully read there it's number six Carmen Cree again working hard here new legs on now number two Hannah, Cr Hannah Trisp and number 14 Katie Sandjuan it's unfortunately lost there again they've made it to the far end of the pitch you'll probably be happy with that as Wales go to the box themselves Scotland doing really well in defence here to get the right shooter up at the right moment to shut down that initial runner Wales need to look at trying to get a pass away to exploit the gaps that exist number four there Lucy Witherspoon holding well as well as number 10 and number 15 for Wales and the score is going to be good that's wonderfully played there by Wales number 10 Joanne Jones and number 15 Amberly Ruck working well together if you watch this again it's a great dump by Amberly Ruck and then pick up is great spaces found great sidestep from Amberly Ruck and the score there by Joanne Jones as we now go to one all it's one each, one to Scotland, one to Wales, scoreboard. Unfortunately, we'll just sort it out for you guys any moment. So, ladies and gentlemen, just as we sort that out, the score currently one all, one all uh, in this match between Scotland and Wales. Uh, again, then Wales come to the sub box. Scotland still very much slowing them down. Wales having to sub in from their own half here and actually going backwards. It's brilliantly shut down by Scotland. Um, they're reading the play really well again Wales need to look at exploiting where the gap is rather than just running the move but I'm sure they will get there as the day goes on Ballot once again but six touches and that's what we were saying because of how well Scotland are shutting this defence down Wales have used up the six touches only on the 10 metre line into Scotland's half so Scotland receive the ball number five for Scotland unfortunately it's going to be fumbled 
by Scotland there. So Wales will get it back. Interesting to see what they do here. If they go to box or they keep the legs on, they're probably going to want to keep the legs as they uh, execute well a three-woman drive there. Now get it out into space to number 15. Here is Amberley Ruck, of course, who set up that brilliant first try for Wales. Ruck and Ballot now in there. It's a lovely sweep here from Serene Lockwood. But a brilliant touch there to save it by number three from Scotland, Suzanne Brownie. Wales again, looking to set it up here. Amberley Ruck trying to get round or oh, just tried to do too much there, unfortunately. Um, Scotland, their, their defence, yeah, wonderful at the moment. They're really getting into the faces of Wales before Wales can even think about what's coming next. Um, and they're going to want to keep this up. Scotland um, started off maybe a bit slowly uh, two weeks ago, but looking at them now, they're really working very well together. Really, really good and pro very promising for uh, what's coming up in uh, two years' time, hopefully at the World Cup. Unfortunately, scrambled there by Wales. But Scotland have done a great job here. Of course, their mixed open team, 2019 Malaysia bronze medalists at the World Cup. And a number of those players now have been put into the men's and women's opens teams. So great amount of experience between them, hopefully with opportunities to play with one another. These teams could go really, really far. And again now, though, as we see Wales with six new players back on and looking to play the ball here. Being very well commanded. It's a lovely run there from Wales, but unfortunately, I think that one's going to be given as a forward pass. Shania Masters did a great, great breakaway there um, into the space. Unfortunately, the last pass not quite there. But uh, it's a good play from Wales. Scotland got a lot of work to do now to get down the pitch. And uh, oh, look at those legs again. Wonderful, wonderful play by uh, number two, Hannah Trisp, who scored that wonderful first try for Scotland. And evidently watching the space very well and oh Scotland going to be kicking themselves at that one fortunately Emma Robson uh, not quite having the player there who'd come off the box to make that um, Wales then with the ball now Jones to Masters working well in the middle there Masters going back to link so it's Jones and number nine uh, Bryony King who making the calls out in the middle here didn't have anyone under her, her there King to set that one up but King and Jones looking set up here as they go for sweeper play move looking back into the space but again Scotland are there coming off the second play it's the right thing to do oh, unfortunate there for Wales so brilliant sweeper set up play they came back into the space and uh, on that last touch which was fifth they knew they needed to do something with it so tried to play it fast but unfortunately once again Scotland's defence working very very well number 11 Megan Jones here on the near side wing for Wales uh, defending that Scottish box really really well Scotland now though beginning to find gaps excellent play from Carmen Cree out wide now number 8 Grace Burton in the middle there it's a great pass off unfortunately they're not quite gathered by Grace Burton but um, Scotland again finding gaps in the Welsh defence which is really good to see they're playing very fluently as Wales now need to get some momentum into this box drive but they will get the six more because uh, Scotland were offside in that case which gives them a great opportunity to bring those new legs on straight away they will have to start though from deep in their own half Good work from Wales. Number 13 there, Rachel Stevens. Cool. Not quite the Rachel Stevens I think we all know, but uh, Rachel Stevens in the middle there, wearing uh, number 13 for Wales. Six touches used up by Wales in this scenario though. And once again, not returning the ball. So referee Robin Budd is going to march Wales back another 10 metres not sure Wales were too happy with that uh, call but uh, rules specifically say you must give the ball back to the nearest player or put it on the mark of the penalty so uh, Scotland now number 10 on the near side here for Scotland Emma Robson passing off there to uh, Trisp 
and number 14 coming on for Scotland as well. Katie Sandram. Scotland, though, again, are going to get a reset here. So it's going to be six more to them. Trish working very well in the middles here, along with Fiona Craig, who's in the middle there as well. Looking to set it up now. The dump's good. Ooh. Okay, so it's fumbled there by Scotland, but uh, Wales offside once again. So uh, Scotland are going to get six more here on the seven-metre line as we sit at one all. Can Scotland convert here? Just once again, she was looking for the pass there to number 10, Emma Robson, who had plenty of space here on this near side wing. Couldn't quite get the pass away initially. So Wales once again. Here it is then. Trish working well. Looking for space. Does find the pass this time. And there it is. Wonderfully, wonderfully done. So wonderful pass by Trish. Out to Emma Robson here on the near side wing. And Scotland will go one up. So this is a general quickly play here. Trish receives the ball back. Is initially looking to score. But then is looking for where the space is. Unfortunately the Welsh winger there. Shut in a bit too much. Which gave... Uh, Emma Robson the, the space there to score um, very brilliant vision there from number two Hannah Trist so um, she's really been their playmaker so far scored the first one herself setting up that second and Scotland as I say are now one ahead at 2-1 with 13 minutes gone in this game Wales though coming back and, but uh, fortunate loss of control there so Scotland now He's being shut well here by Wales as Scotland comes to the box. That's third touch here, still in their own half. So lovely running there by number six, Carmen Cree, and number three, Suzanne Brownie, as they've made some great metres here. Unfortunately, that's six touch there, but they did make it to the seven metre line. And that's always a win. If you can't score, you want to make sure you at least get the yards because now it makes it slightly harder for Wales to. Uh, get to their own sub box and get up the pitch it's looking a bit slow here from Wales again Scotland doing very well they've already shut the space down and, the, and Wales are going to have to take this fourth touch deep in their own half they've only got two left to play with it's well scooped here from oh and the gap's opened up where's that come from Bryony King finding the space she's got to get the pass away oh and she does it Look at that from where they were on the pitch. Bryony King, what a setup. The gap just opened up in the middles there. As the half scoops, look, comes through the middle. All she's doing is to looking to get that pass away. Does so right at the end. Well gathered by the Welsh winger and scored right there on the line. Brilliant play there from Wales as we now go to two all. Trist began in the centre here for Scotland, calling the shots for, for them, working with number 14. Katie Sandram. And also working with number 9. Fiona Craig here. Initially setting up the short. Now looking wide here at the space here. The gap's there for Robson again. Uh, unfortunately... <laughs> Unfortunately, in that case, Robson, I'm not sure if there's another line painted on the pitch, but has gone slightly early there with the dive. And the touch was then made, so they're on last touch and it will be six. Such a shame that for Robson. Might have been in if it uh, made the correct line, but um, one disadvantage of playing on a standard rugby union pitch is there are plenty of lines that you can get confused with. Uh, referees and players alike, I should know myself, but um, it's great play from Scotland once again. Trisp there in the centre working very well with Case San Juan. Um, really finding the winger passes there. But Wales now in possession into the Scotland half. It's been slowed down well by Scotland. Oh, and fumbled there on the floor, unfortunately, by the Welsh Open team. Ambly Ruck, unfortunately, there. But uh, Scotland then, again, looking to come to the box. Tris once again, making some brilliant metres, finding the spaces really, really well. And Scotland take the second touch. On the 10 metre line in Wales half. Emma Robson linking up very nicely again with Trisp. 
Robson underneath with Claire Hill well held that by Davidson couldn't quite make something of that Scotland unfortunately but uh, nonetheless again made the metres Wales now really this is better from Wales much more pace on the box drive as we see fresh players onto the pitch including number 14 Masters once again linking very well with Lucy Isaac but they've used the six touches need to be counting that need to be counting that at this level to know when you're on your last touch Scotland coming to the box Robson once again acting as half of the players slowed down slightly there was looking for the pass meters once again made by number six Cree and number eight Burton who is I think Scotland there were appealing for six more with an intercepted hand from Wales, but not going to be given. And uh, it's a loss of control anyway for Scotland. Um, and Wales now near enough to their box. Here they come then. It's a good play that by Scotland, uh, but by Wales, sorry. They've now got the players in position as we see Stevens holding on to the ball just about last touch now is it going to be another breakaway by King just passes away Stevens now Wales really passing the ball well there unfortunately not quite coming off but between Stevens and King it's um, very well done that to uh, try and find the space Perhaps a little late in their play. He needed to just notice it slightly earlier for it to come off. Robson once again. Ooh. <laughs> and uh, King, unfortunately, for Wales there. A bit of a hard touch, that on Scotland. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so um, apologies for that. Uh, what was going on there, essentially to explain it, Scotland initially given the penalty, but unfortunately then uh, giving away a late pass themselves. But that is the hooter then at, at half-time. Would have gone nicely there for Wales. Um, Rachel Thomas Evans there out on the wing, if she caught it there. Uh, but ladies and gentlemen, that brings us to the end of the first half here in this first women's opens game at Manchester um, brilliant place so far and hopefully you will be able to join us for the second half in five minutes time
Good afternoon everyone and welcome back to Borton Park FC here in Manchester on what has been a lovely sunny day so far. You join us halfway through the first women's Opens game of the day between Wales and Scotland. It's been a cracker so far and hopefully you can join us for the rest of the games we've got through the day. Bit of a schedule coming up for you so next game at 1 o'clock will be men's Open between England and Ireland at 1.50. The second mixed Open game of the day between Wales and Scotland 2.40. Women's Open, we'll see Scotland again versus England. And then the final three games of the day, final men's Open game will be Scotland versus Ireland at 3.30. 4.20, Women's Open will be England versus Wales and the final game of the day at 5.10 will be the mixed Open again, England versus Wales. You join me, Jack Harris, uh, for this game today. Uh, I have mentioned previously on our feed, unfortunately, we're, we're slightly short of commentators today. So myself, I'm having to juggle this and refereeing. Uh, so unfortunately, not all games will have a commentary feed, but we will give you the live pictures throughout the day uh, for this Autumn International Series. Back to the game in hand. It's been a cracker of the first half. Both teams uh, really playing well together, really stepped up from two weeks ago. Uh, we've seen some brilliant play from Scotland, really led by uh, Tris, number two for Scotland. She's uh, been pivotal to Scotland so far, uh, s scoring their first try and setting up their second. Wales have had some good tries themselves. King running through to make a break and getting the pass away at the last moment. And uh, it's now two all which is uh, proving to be a great game here as we restart the second half now with Wales earning a penalty for offside from the Scottish players number 10 Jones currently on the ball work in the middle there as you see the sweep coming round from Ballot who's looking for space there gets the long pass away it's well caught by Megan Jones slightly behind her which is why Scotland could get there but uh, it's a lovely play. Jones now in the middle. Taking the touch. Short play coming. Ballot. Once again, Scotland are going to get offside call here. So Wales with six to play with once again. Wales, if you look at their setup here, both their wingers sitting very, very wide. Uh, hopefully looking for that space. It's a good setup once again. Short play and the ball is down first from Wales. Lovely vision that from Ruck. Once again working with Jones and Ballot really, really well. For those of you beginning to learn touch, this is a perfect short play setup. Running in there from Ruck and all she's doing is looking for the gap between the two middles and gets it down beautifully. 3-2 to Wales. As we see Scotland now. Once again, Trisp working very closely with Craig. And number 14, San Juan. Good pod here. Now looking to exploit the right hand side where they've got the overlap. Once again, playing the quick second face ball. The gap's there for Robson. Brilliant catch and a brilliant score. Scotland doing what they do best again. Watch this. Initially exploiting one side and they quickly on the second phase just look to come back to the other way quickly. It's Trisp again who's given the pass there to Robson who's got the space on the wing. Um, wonderful, wonderful. Three all. <laughs> Wales then. Once again, Jones. Ballot. 
fortunately not coming off them there. Ball to ground. So Scotland will now earn it. Uh, based on the way they're setting up, they are going to be coming to the box here. Overlap play. Wales looking to shut it down as quick as we can. Robson. Jones making the touch. But Scotland now are going to have to do something with this here. They're on last touch already. Wales playing the moment game. They've got the passes away. So uh, Wales now turning into the shutdown team in defence. Scotland couldn't go far there at all. So Wales now setting it up here in, this, in the middle of the pitch. Number five, Grace Bellamy. And number nine, Bryony King, who set up that wonderful try we saw in the first half. King now makes the dump as we see Ruck now looking for the space there. And again, working well together. Is King going to get the ball down? She does. Both of them working very well together there. So just watch this one again, everyone. Ruck and King. Initial pass back there, and it's a second phase play again. Scotland still working to get on side. Only one shooter from Scotland. No one else comes up, and it creates the dogleg gap. So Wales again go ahead now. 4-3 to Wales with 24 minutes gone in this game. Scotland now. As we see San Juan and Craig once again working in the centre. It's a big sweep here coming from Scotland. Number four has come on it, but oh, yep. Touch is made by Wales. There's one hell of a sweep by Lucy Witherspoon there. Probably into the wrong space, unfortunately. There was nothing left here on the left-hand side. Really wanted to go right, which they're doing now. Trisp again, and she made that. Look at that. Once again, absolutely stunning. Hannah Trisp. All she does is some quick fancy feet. Look at that. Notices the space between the middles. Been absolutely pivotal so far to Scotland. Still in the game because of her. And uh, I think Wales need to look at uh, making sure they do not let Trisp have too much time on the ball here. As now we once again are all square. As we see Ballot going for it. And again, she's made some metres, and the score is good. Very quick response that from Wales. Karis Ballett scoring and diving into the space there, just running around the defensive player. So both teams now evidently beginning to get tired through the game. It's going to be mistakes here. The less mistakes made, the more likely you are to win this game. Scores coming left, right and centre. Both teams sticking to their game plan though. Still a physical game. As we now see Scotland working well with Burton. She's got number six. Cree on the outside as another sweep comes here from Brownie. Looking. Initially looking for the pass up but it's been touched by a Welsh hand. So Scotland will get six more. Right where they want to be. Let's see what they can do. Brownie on the ball. And again, six more for Scotland. For the hard touch there by King. Brownie looking for the gap. Touch made by King. Grace Burton on her outside. Working with her in the middle there. And number 12. Amy Martin there on the link for them. Quickie play coming from both middles. Robson again there on the outside. But uh, pass is not given and passes forward. Bit of discussion between the referees here, but uh, essentially after the ball's been played there, it has been another hard touch from Wales. So Scotland are going to get the ball back. 
but unnecessary physicality from Wales. And Scotland have scored off it, which Wales are going to kick themselves about. Once again, I don't think Wales just regrouped there and knew what hit them, but all we've got is Scotland number eight, Grace Burton, getting the quickie ball back and finding the uh, space for the pass to go away. And Scotland now, once again, making it evens with Wales. Just under 12 minutes to go here in this game. Jones, once again, working with Ruck. And Ballot. Looking for that space. Well shut down by Scotland. Last touch now for Wales. They're going to need to do something with this. Scotland just need to stay high. And Wales giving a... And we lost it for a moment, but we're back. No scores in that small uh, gap that we were away. So we're still at five all with Wales attacking now, looking for the setup. But uh, Jones not quite making it there. Wonderful score from Wales. Wonderful score that. And then once again, we'll go one ahead. Scotland now. Looking to get back here to within level terms. Amy Martin. Oh, another breakaway from Scotland here. All they've got to do is get the pass away, which happens. Breakaway from Burton. Pass off to Brownie. And the score is good. It's back and forth here from both teams. And uh, evidently working very hard. But if you go and score, the next thing you need to do is defend it. Next thing you need to do is defend it. Jones now. Again, in with Masters. But it's a fumble that from Ruck. It's not what Wales needed. Scotland. Rob Budd giving the penalty there against Wales because the chat is coming too much now from Wales. They need to remain composed here if they want to continue um, in, with this game and to win this game, more importantly. Evidently, uh, things getting to Wales. Need to remain composed to Scotland now. Saying with it, San Juan and Trisp now. She's found the space again. Needs to get a pass away to somebody. Will she? Look at that. And it's good. Trisp once again. Absolutely stunning work from her. Found the space. Was the half. So needed to get the pass away. And did eventually. Right off to Lucy Witherspoon who found the space right on the right hand side there. 
Scotland for the first time now I believe are ahead very tight game this one with roughly about eight minutes to go Burton it's a good drive that in from Wales here from Martin working well with Craig touch made that from Scotland again good solid work their defense has certainly been a lot tighter than Wales Wales having to work a lot harder to get the score on the door it's a very tight position here for Wales probably needed it to go the other way as Craig attempted to score but six touches here Scotland coming to the box Robson off the floor and again now with Triss behind her looking for the new players it slowed down that for Scotland that isn't what they needed in the slightest it's a lovely switch play that from Wales uh, Wales initially claiming the ball there knocked out the hands but the ball no um, won't get that one again referee Rob Budd saying the touch was absolutely fine Ballot now working with Huxtable <sighs> Wales unfortunately there it's getting to them initially set up for the short play and uh, King said no let's go long and the pass therefore was not long that's why it went to the floor unfortunately Scotland once again come to the box let's see if they can sort it this time Hobson off to Cree and Robson again now number one Claire Hill looking to set up oh just needed to get that pass away from Gladding didn't quite work unfortunately Wales though now going to box definitely looking tired and they need to inject the pace here because Scotland once again have become very tight here in defence. All they're doing is pushing the play over, making sure they've got the numbers to shut it all down. Wales now, this is going to be fifth touch. Pick up here. And touch made. It's all unfortunately Ambly Ruck could do with that one. Scotland then once again going to the box continuing to be defended this side by Lucy Davidson from Wales Robson this side as well very much acting as the under dummy half for the box move Trisp unfortunately couldn't quite control that one pass was a bit behind her from Kate Sanjuan but they're working well as a pod this Scotland middle set uh, certainly scored a few when they've been on uh, hopefully they can defend this one now as well Ruck then along with Lockwood trying to call the shots but again couldn't quite get that pass off the floor quite right Wales need to remain composed here they need to get back in this game obviously but Scotland for now if they can just play their cards right they might come away with this but no they're also a handling error from Scotland so Wales are going to win the ball back they're looking for some fresh legs here but uh, Davidson and Lockwood and Windsor trying to work in the middle here now they get it out wide to the left Huxtable back into Windsor it's a sweet play coming round from Ballot, but shut down brilliantly there from number three from Scotland, Brownie. Knew what was coming there, so sweeper play didn't work for Wales. Again, now another sweeper play from Wales. Number 16 coming round. And the gap's there, but the touch is made by Scotland first. Brilliant try-saving touch from Scotland. Lockwood thought she was in there. Scotland now keeping this defence tight. Last touch for Wales. Davidson 
passes forward here as well so Scotland getting the penalty too Davidson called offside here so Scotland are going number eight Grace Burton will she make it yes she does exactly what Scotland needed watching that one back again Davidson here so, sorry yes Grace Bellamy apologies on this near side for Wales offside initially when the penalty was taken referee told her to play on but uh, Grace Burton saw the space and went very much looking out of breath here now but a uh, great effort from her and Scotland now getting into their own with this game let's see if they can see it out Jones from Wales again working well with King sweeper play from Ruck still sweeping Masters not quite making it there again Scotland right on it with the defence set up coming from Jones Ruck underneath long ball into Stevens. long ball again beautiful that from Wales really good play wonderfully scored by Megan Jones out there on the wing again those of you beginning to pick up touch watching great plays that uh, beautiful setup long ball there off the touch Ruck the long pass off to Stevens, looking to exploit the gap initially but then eyeing up where the space was and got the long pass out to Jones on the wing um, textbook stuff that wonderful so here comes Scotland again we'll want to get one back Trisp and Craig working in the middle with San Juan so looking for the space now can afford to slow it down Wales have got to go and make that touch quickie play Trisp looking for the space long balls there for Robson oh couldn't quite get there on that one pass just needs to be a little longer from Trisp tempers beginning to run high here in this game final touch made there and that will be it ladies and gentlemen a wonderfully fought game very close game but Scotland coming away with it in the end the difference Scotland's playmaker hats off has got to go to Trisp and her pod with San Juan well, as that concludes that game, and Craig absolutely wonderful play on, from them which really was the difference Wales unfortunately getting tired towards the end mistakes coming in and their defense needed to be tighter but wonderful game hope you enjoyed that one and we'll be back very shortly with men's open which is uh, England versus Ireland coming to you in five minutes time at one o'clock hope you can join us the sun appears to be staying with us all day today so uh, if you are playing keep yourself well hydrated <laughs>
Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to what is turning into a beautiful day here at Borton Park FC in Manchester. If you've been with us through the morning, hope you've enjoyed the live feed so far. If you're just joining us, welcome to this Autumn International Series second round between England, Ireland, Scotland and Wales. Uh, we've just seen the end of a wonderful women's open game between Wales and Scotland. Uh, where Scotland came out in the end as victorious. Uh, but it was a lovely close game and some beautiful plays. If you're joining us now, you're about to see the men's open England taking on Ireland. It's going to be what promises to be a wonderful game. Uh, it uh, has been a joy to watch these sides. England, a very experienced side, of course, um, who played with each other for a, a number of years now, a number of very experienced players in that side. But uh, Ireland, who came in last week, uh, two weeks ago, nothing to lose, and uh, ended up winning both their games against Scotland and Wales under some new coaching. Uh, they have really come some way so far. They've got a wonderful, wonderful box drive which has some real pace on it. And uh, it be interesting to see how England deal with that in this game. When they met two weeks ago, these teams, England did come away with it quite well at 11-4. But was certainly the toughest game England saw uh, throughout the day. Once again, Ireland, I've got nothing to lose here. And uh, England are still going to have to be up for this because I think Ireland have still made a great amount of progress over the past two weeks. And they really could cause an upset here if England don't turn on here. So um, it's going to be a lovely, lovely game to watch. Team sheets for you. England men's opens team. You'll see Mark Aldous, Ewan Armstrong, Adam Brimlow, Dominic Brook, Josh Henderson, Clark Hobson, Sam Jones, Will Lupton, Ben Meakin. Jordan Melling, Vaughan Meredith, Miles Partridge, Will Serracold, Camille Shabardine, Henry Stratford, Zubin Tanner, Dom Tripp and John Weston Stanley. For the Irish team, Mark Fallan, Ben O'Connell, James O'Donnell, Fergus Bileach Leach, Eddie DeVitt, Luke Dorenzi, Jane Maher, Jamie Maher, sorry, John Ennis, Damud Hodry, Stephen Troy, Connor Murphy, Matt Kennison, Dara Forster, Sean Balance, Ryan, uh, Root Nara Singh, Cillian Daly, Joe Balance, Alexander Castig, Christopher Cole, uh, Kian Mollen and Robin Nayland. England playing from right to left then in possession to begin with. Will Surakold now looking to dump as we see a brutal short play here. Long ball goes. Wonderful touch that by Ireland. It was a wonderful initial short setup play that by Sarah Cold and Lupton. Adam Brimelow there uh, catching the ball and going long. Ireland trying to stay high here. Another sweet play coming in. Lupton looking to go long. Beautiful ball that from England, but it is given as forward on this occasion. Jordan Melling, there are some players in this England team that can whip some beautiful long balls a hell of a distance. Joy to see when they come off. Unfortunately, that one's slightly forward as we see Ireland now working forward. Uh, Stephen Troy in the middle there, along with Matt Kennison. But England have shut that down well and are off the mark and Ireland are having to scramble here because England are going quickly. Will Serracold out to... Vaughan Meredith, Dom Tripp now, calling things in the middle with Clark Hobson and Will Lupton here at link. Miles Partridge out on the far right wing. Will Lupton dipping, diving, dodging. And the score is going to be given with the Irish still offside. Will Lupton, beautifully fast feet there, went for the dive, took the opportunity and England already won up. Ireland now going to have the opportunity to come back at them then. Beautiful running play by Cordier. 15. Ooh, but a bit too hard, making it a bit hard for themselves there, Ireland. Lost control of the ball here and England looking to run riot. Trip now. Off to Armstrong. And then on to Melling. 
and Brooke with Aldis and Meekin working together strongly 27 on the outside here and not quite coming off there for England unfortunately possibly forcing it a bit too much that one is uh, Jordan Nelling not quite able to get the pass away here Ireland needed someone underneath that and uh, held on to it just about because England are on them like a rash Partridge making the touch but Ireland going to the box well dummied that from Ireland number one Mark Fellan and Ireland now on the fourth touch there O'Connell out to balance but uh, not quite making it on that occasion England now getting the ball back Aldous off the floor to Meekin Aldous again now out wide to Brook Lupton now as we see Sarah Cold and Brimelow short play Sarah Cold on the ball out back to Lupton excellent touch that by number 17 Joe Balance from Ireland Lupton thought he was in there again for a second score but uh, not on this occasion Ireland now pushing to the box let's see the pace then that these guys can come off the box with excellent meters made that from Sean Balance and number 10 Stephen Troy need the wide ball here but James O'Donnell couldn't get that away I think he thought that England was still offside and he had time there which wasn't the case Meekin to Seracold Brimelow looking wide to Partridge Partridge has got legs will he go well chased that from uh, number 13 from Ireland Dara Forster but England have made some metres here Brook now of course to Melling and he's got Hob Clark Hobson in support and Ewan Armstrong trips there underneath pick up immediately that ball trips got on him but touch is great there from Ireland they read that straight away they know if Dom Tripp's going to be on the ball that, that is going to go any which way and direction at any distance but it's well covered from Ireland now England slowed down the play slightly Sean Balance has had to slow down there and then we've got Forster making the dump Ireland need to inject the pace now because England again but we now see Falan trying to make some metres but six touches already and England are shutting this box drive down well from Ireland uh, was fortunate enough to referee Ireland's first game against Wales and their box drive is extremely pacey when they can get it going and given the space but England doing well at the moment to slow it down England then as we see Meekin now on the ball and Aldous here calling the shots Melling and they needed to do something there England because they're now on last touch Melling pass out or oh, didn't quite work that for England but it was the right choice with no touches left Aldous couldn't quite keep hold of it but the pass was behind him Coydry now new fresh legs for Ireland Murphy O'Connell good scoop that unfortunately number 16 there Daly had got it away to Connell but then a touch and pass pass was late from Ireland they're trying to do things with it Meekin then to Shabadeen Meekin now the long ball trying to work it a bit too much there England possibly currently when they're only one score up Ireland now then back with it O'Connell underneath his balance and he's got Troy telling him to go forward because they can't afford to use all these touches looking for the space 
Ballant again looking to call the shots here. As O'Donnell looking to go in. Troy passes off into Kennison. It's the long ball. Still well held here from Ireland. They've got to do something with it. They've got no touches left. Apologies, that is the last. Donnell, long ball. Ooh. And uh, I think... Winger out here for England. Vaughan Meredith is going to... Uh, kick himself for that because in playing the ball and then fumbling it Ireland get back with six more and it's still going England switched off wonderful play that from Sean Balance England will definitely kick themselves on that one because Ireland went right we've got six to use let's keep up the pace and look what happens wonderful score from Ireland England weren't awake and they're back in the game here one apiece Melling then with Armstrong. Meredith out to the left, but Melling and Armstrong working this left hand side at the moment. Hobson passing off here to Melling again. Melling looking for the long ball, but Ireland shutting it down quickly. Melling and Hobson working well. Looking now for the switch play. Armstrong also switching. Gap is there. Can Hobson get the ball away? passes forward from Hobson so Ireland getting six on their seven meter line are going to the box then Troy in the middle there working well with Balance again the try scorer new legs this is the pace we're talking about look at this Ireland have found the gap and they're going to score this wonderful play off the box that from Ireland Ryan Roop Narasing scoring the end of that play. Stunning work from Ireland. That's what happens when they are given the space off the box. Found the space. England were not set. And the fresh legs go and score straight away. And Ireland now go ahead in this game. Aldous making the dump. Shabadine now on the ball. Trip out wide. Trips there. Meekin on his outside. Aldous and Trip trying in the middle here. Sweep coming round from Shabadine. He needs to get the pass away. It's a lovely line that from Meekin. And England straight away back in this. Let's watch that one back because that line there from Meekin is textbook. Those of you again looking at touch, trying to understand the skill set. When we talk about hitting holes, running great lines. Perfect example of that from Meekin. He knew where the space was. Winger for Ireland didn't quite know where he needed to be. And that now is 2 all. Ireland then. Can they get back into this? Can they get ahead again? Ennis with Falan. Good dump. Falan coming round. Ennis is there. It's a wonderful touch that from Lupton though to stop the score. Ennis and Falan couldn't quite get the pass away so on this occasion Ireland not quite successful England then with the space on this side near their box needs to be underneath that new set new legs here now with Melling right there wanting it back Armstrong and Hobson on their sides And uh, I'm going to say, if I've been getting names wrong, I apologise, ladies and gentlemen, because England have got two number sixes on at the moment. I believe Melling is, I was going to say, wearing the black cap. They're both wearing black caps. England, sort this out, for goodness sake. So uh, apologies if I've got some name wrong between those players there, ladies and gentlemen. But I'm doing my best. Troy now for Ireland on the ball. Still with that pace off the box. O'Donnell passing back in. Scoop off the floor. O'Donnell. 
but was the half so will have to return the ball Hobson underneath Armstrong with Brooke and Hobson again trip banging it in looking to add the pace Sarah Cold Meekin goes for the pick looking for the long ball for trip is the space there again looking for it back Ireland defended this brilliantly wonderful defense out from Ireland England throwing it about but really could not find the space there great play from Ireland Playing on here, but it's a loss of control by Ireland. And uh, fortunately, we've got an injury there on the far right-hand side for Ireland at the moment. So we're just going to take a pause here. I haven't seen what's caused it, unfortunately, but the player looks winded. Uh, so bear with us, ladies and gentlemen. And we restart play then, ladies and gentlemen. England with the ball and fresh legs. They'll not be coming to the box. Trip now, working closely. With Aldous, who's there. Trip off the floor. Aldous again. Lupton out to their left. Shevardine out to the right. And gets the ball down. Look at that. Score is good for England. And they get another one on the board. It's a wonderful dive that from Camille Shabadine. Got there right at the last minute. Be proud of that. Be good work. Trip happy. High fives there in the England box. But uh, they can't afford to go to sleep here because, as we've seen, Ireland can really turn the pace on when uh, they have space. Rupnar Singh now there. A wonderful ball that and it's a wonderful score what a finish and what a score that from Ireland that pass stunning work and Ireland again are now back with in level pegging of England here England once again napping slightly as soon as they've scored can't really afford to do that in a game like this Lupton now looking for Melling underneath him Sarah Cold goes for it but the touch is good Melling and Sarah Cold calling the shots in the middle here short play Lupton Oh, unfortunate that for Ireland. It's well read that by uh, Sean Balance, but uh, in hitting the ball down, England are going to get six more here. So initially here, starting with Adam Brimelow and Lupton. Oh, he slipped that slightly, but it, and uh, hope he's all right. Hold on. Unfortunately, I think. Uh, the ground has got the better of him there he's done a bit of slipping so it's an injury for England as well Ireland having their own earlier needs a bit of time but England uh, Meekin comes onto the pitch to uh, help him out it's a loss of control by Ireland so uh, England are now going to get the ball back again Sarah Cold coming off, Aldous in there, Brimelow to Aldous, two middles here, Melling on the right side, Meekin here on the left, looking for it back in, He's getting that long ball away to Partridge, can Partridge make something, can he go round his opposite number? 
Miles has got legs there on the outside and the defensive player from Ireland did very well there to stop him getting anywhere near the touchline. Throwing the ball about from England. Brimelo on the ball. But Ireland not advancing in their seven. Six more to England. Brimelo and Melling talking to one another in the middle here. Meekin underneath. Short play. Gets the ball back immediately. Ireland keeping them out though. It's being well read. Sean Balance again in there from the link position. Getting his hands on. Of course, in touch, there's no penalty for uh, what you might term a deliberate knock-on in Union. But uh, it does mean that you've got defend, to defend six more touches, which can be very hard work. You see Melling attempt to go for centre gap there. England very much playing off the short play here, but looking to get the pass away. It's a quick shoot up there from Ireland. Need to be careful to not create the dog leg. Brimelo off to Melling, looking for the long ball out. Can Meekin grab it? No! Ireland now, interception, restart the touch count, that's zero touch for Ireland, first touch is coming, and England now need to stay with it, Daryl Forster on there, here come Ireland, and referee's going to stop the play here, mainly because the attacking player led a bit forcefully into the face there of the England player so both players need to control their momentum into the touch it's not uh, solely reliant on the attacker or the defender it's down to both players so referee Roger Neighbours just saying let's control the touches O'Connell now on the ball lovely offload that to Daly. Working well in the middle. And they've got the space on the outside here. England shutting it down well after six touches. Melling and Partridge there on the outside. Oh, can Partridge make it? No, I think the touch was made there, and that will bring us to half-time, ladies and gentlemen. What a half. Great display of touch from both teams. Seeing how fast Ireland can react off the box. Scoring a wonderful try down here in the bottom right corner. Finding the space. England need to make sure they aren't napping when they score. Because Ireland have come straight back into it every time there. Thank you very much for joining us, ladies and gentlemen. We've got the second half of this game coming up very slowly. As mentioned today, unfortunately, we are short of commentators, so not every game will have a commentary feed. Uh, we'll do our best to give you one, though. Live pictures are available throughout the day. Uh, I will not be with you through the second half. Uh, I've got to go and referee a game myself. Uh, but to keep you updated, of course, after this game, of which we've got 20 more minutes, at 1.50 we'll see mixed open game. Wales take on Scotland there, and afterwards... Women's Open is England versus Scotland there at 2.40. Stay with us, ladies and gentlemen. Second half of this wonderful game between England and Ireland still to come.
Uh, players and officials, uh, two minute warning. Two players and officials, two minute warning. players and officials, one minute warning. and 30 seconds to tap off.
Well, that concludes the game. From what I can see, there was uh, lots of tries being scored on both pitches for that uh, for that match. Well done to all four. Next tap off will be in uh, just under four minutes time. Make sure you're on your pitches, ready to play. Players and officials, this is your two minute warning, players and officials, two minute warning for the next tap off. So, players and officials, we're past the one minute warning. If you want to start taking to the pitches ready to play, this is your 30 second warning. This is your 30 second warning. Stand by.
Officials, is your two minute warning? Players and officials, this is your one minute warning. Just had a request from the referees for the supporters and fans. You need to have uh, five metres from the top tie line or the tap line. If you can just make a little bit of gap away from the lines, we greatly appreciate it. Officials, 30 seconds. A reminder can uh, supporters just move five metres away from the uh, deadline? Players and officials, stand by.
officials is your two minute warning for next tap off. Just to make you aware on the uh, rugby pitches there are going to be uh, two games starting so you'll have to be walking round the pitches. Uh, if you want to be going to the clubhouse you need to walk round the pitches. If you're required to get to the clubhouse. Officials, this is your one minute warning. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Broughton Park FC in sunny Manchester, where we've had a great day of games so far. If you're just joining us, you're currently watching Women's Open England versus Scotland. Uh, first couple of minutes into the game, still currently 0-0. Uh, and again, I am Jack Harris, pleased to be with you here this afternoon. And on that note, no apologies. It's a late pass there from England, so we'll not be a score on this occasion. But as I was saying, uh, today I'm wearing many hats, and uh, as well as refereeing and being shorter commentators, meaning that uh, you've got to put up with me for your commentary this afternoon. 
Uh, we've had a great day of games so far, as I mentioned. You will have just seen Wales mixed open versus Scotland, a repeat of what was the European final a couple of years ago. But now, as mentioned, we're here with the Women's Open, England and Scotland. After this game at 3.30, you'll see the Men's Open, Scotland versus Ireland. Uh, and after that, we've got two more games, one more Women's Open and one more Mixed Open game as well. But back to the game in hand. So England versus Scotland still at nil-nil after a couple of minutes uh, of play and I'm delighted to say that I've finally got a partner in crime joined by Gregor Whiteman. Gregor, how are you? Uh, not too bad. Um, came off a few games today, uh, run a bit heavy but it's quite good to be back. Uh, I'm only here two weeks back. Um, but it's quite nice to be back playing full touch and and full touch again. Yeah, we've absolutely loved it. Um, it's been brilliant to finally have some international touch happening uh, in the world and uh, very lucky to see some very high standards of games today. Now, uh, Gregor, I understand that you know Scotland very well in general. I wonder why. But um, can you tell us anything about this team? You can, might be able to tell us that they've scored. Yeah, um, Leah down there, uh, really good at running. Um, some track star. Um, but they're, they're a very composed team. Um, they play. They play a very connected game. Something's going on beside us. We don't know what it is. We've got. A, we're getting a crowd here, which is lovely to see. Um, here we've got a Scottish men's open side watching this one right next to us. So if you hear any cheering when Scotland score, uh, that's what you're going to hear. But that was a wonderful score that by Leah Gladding, and uh, it means that Scotland at the moment have gone ahead. Yeah, um, Scotland just they, they play a very composed game. Got a lot of experienced players. Um, on the field and in the sub box um, and the coach Eddie is a very very experienced player playing for a lot of, a lot of years um, much like the England team Yeah, the uh, Scottish side as you say coached by uh, Eddie of Bareback Riders the club he plays for down in England but um, Scotland are looking like a great side at the moment they've certainly come a long way in two weeks brilliant play in the first game we saw earlier today against uh, Wales where they came out on top in the end um, but they are having to do some hard defending work at the moment. It's a great long ball. That's a, that's a really well worked score. But that was beautifully, beautifully played long ball that from Susanna Hudson. Uh, right out there, skipped two players. And uh, once again, it means that England now have drawn level. Great score that by Katie Fielding. Comes, comes from the setup, doesn't it? Right in the middle of the field and goes right out wide. Um, one thing that most, most of the teams who are really good at doing. Um, driving up to the line and, and setting up quite well that mid-link set up and getting out to the far wing absolutely absolutely we've seen some great sort of pod work over the day players that usually play with one another really knowing each other well um, and uh, it means that you pull off some great great plays as you say it's all about the setup normally to try and get those uh, great scores in yeah, um, quite quite good in the, uh, Scotland as our setup with the, the fact that we don't have that many clubs. Um, a lot a lot of players in the, this women's team playing for the the Galaxy side, um, and, and in the men's team a lot of them play for the Galaxy side as well. Um, and Eddie's the coach of Galaxy, so <laughs> we're getting, getting lots of positives out of that. Well, exactly. I suppose as you say, there is a positive there. Is that everyone knows each other in this in the world of Scottish touch. Yeah, and. Uh, it pays dividends when it comes round to a game game like this. But we're seeing England now looking to try and get another one on the board. It's a good ball good out. Scoop. Oh. oh, unlucky that for Sofa Bus not. But uh, England now will look to try and close down this Scottish sub move. As uh, referee Rog Neighbours. Rog is a very good referee. He's uh, certainly one of those refs that you'd love to see coming you, well you'd love to see all referees coming to a yeah. pitch both of us wearing yellow at the moment hopefully you enjoy all of us coming to referee your game but Roger especially very strong referee uh, currently commanding things in the middle good attacking set from Scotland um, getting right from their own scoreline getting all the way up I'm lucky to get sick touch there yeah it was a good run initially there from uh, Leah Gladding uh, and again making the touch there as well uh, noticed the space very very well um, I'm under the impression that Leah used to run at a very high level at 800 metres yeah um, I think she was Scottish champion at one point actually 
Um, every time I, I've played against her or ref or anything, I've always made sure to put my running boots on because they're uh, pretty fast. Well, probably you know one of those players that can get away with wearing bright pink boots yeah um, if, if not the only player that can get away with well, bright pink exactly boots. but um, new new pod coming on for Scotland and once again we are seeing this wonderful partnership of crisp um, sorry Craig and um, uh, ha yeah Hannah crisp who they were pivotal in the game against Wales Hannah crisp setting up a few tries herself uh, and scoring one too unfortunately hasn't come for them there but um, they've been this pod have been playing very well with one another yeah Hannah crisp and uh, Katie Samwan um, very very two quite experienced players um, play play for Galaxy together um, it's quite different seeing them in a, a full women's side when they're, they're used to playing playing mixed but um, kind of playing that mid partnership really strong um, and managing to set it up quite well. Penalty there for offside, Hannah Crisp. Yeah, unfortunate there for Scotland. They were doing well to shut down the England sub box move, but England now getting six more. We've got Emily Irons on the ball, uh, partnered up there with. Uh, I'm trying to see who else is on the pitch now. What numbers have we got going on? Uh, with Susanna Hudson there too. Quite notable for all these teams after lockdown um, and this whole coronavirus situation um, that they've got a lot of the young players playing. They have. Um, Hannah Spear out on the wing for Scotland, uh, blue hair and different boots. <laughs> well, um, uh, on that note, even with the young talent in, it takes some experience to score as well. And Emily Irons, who is a very seasoned op women's opens player, lovely dive there to finish off that one for England. As England now go one ahead, 2 1 currently. A new sub uh, tap off move for Scotland. I've not saw that one in a while. Yeah, they're still uh, keeping it relatively central, but uh, their wingers certainly are options here. Near side winger, uh, we've got, uh, ooh, if I remember correctly, yeah, Emma Robson, who again scored a number of tries in their first game. But is it going to be the other winger that, for Scotland? No, unfortunately. That's a good touch there. There's a lot of rules that a lot of players don't know about the, the touch on the body. You can touch anyone anywhere with, with any part of your own body. Um, so if you dive into them, it's a bit unlucky, isn't it? Well, hopefully not leading with the shoulder or anything yeah. like that. But um, yes, that is very true. As we see, Sofa Buth not now playing um, dummy half. And some great metres here from England. Some really good pace. Really good pace. They're going to have to want to capitalise on this. They've slowed down, though, which is probably not what they wanted. Mimi Patton dumping. It's a good sweet play. Is the space there? Yes, good touch, touch is made. There. Very good touch that by uh, Carmen Cree. Carmen's a very experienced player, plays for uh, Glasgow Lions. Um, very experienced and plays quite well with a lot of these players, knowing that she's, she's not from Edinburgh. <laughs> quite an Edinburgh based uh, Scotland squad all round. Um, but it's quite good seeing players coming from, from out with kind of Aberdeen and all these sorts of places playing. Absolutely, beauty of uh, playing international based stuff. Everyone plays with one another. And. Uh, You've got to get used to it very quickly to perform at this high level. We've got some lovely players who maybe play well when they know their teammates, but if you, you're less experienced with your teammates, sometimes things just don't pull off quite as well. Just like that sub move, eh? Yes. They're broken down quite badly. Yeah, unfortunately, again, one of the things that let Scotland down in their first game is the uh, slowed it down the sub box if uh, they weren't quick enough and um, already, without getting out of their own half, have given up the six touches. Scotland coming off the field a bit tired now, uh, sitting in the sub box, things like that. Um, I think it'll come in the second half back in their favour with the pace, um, but you can see them letting their foot off the gas a little bit, just kind of slowing down. Yeah, it can be a long day. I mean, after a year and a half of lockdown, three 40-minute games can um, yeah. can take it out of you, but um, you've got to keep going at this level. You've got to continue to be working hard and uh, play the whole 40 minutes. Scotland again actually did come back in their first game as Good we're seeing dive. a brilliant dive there and it looks like we're going to get another score for England wonderful dive that I think uh, once again we've got uh, uh, Danny Gregory that one I believe who has uh, scored that's a wonderful wonderful dive quite nice when the, the Scotland men's team have moved away from us we can hear ourselves <laughs> I think they've got a game to prepare for yeah. but um, 
wonderful to see them supporting as we see now Crisp once again looking to get that pass away to Robson oh, unlucky pass, pass footed a little bit too much um, mm. too much time in the air let the, the English defence come across yeah Katie Fielding there covering that but Robson again making That's herself unlucky. very available uh, on this wing here and hopefully something will come good for her as we see England now regaining the possession and they're going to be heading to their box Don't want to slow it down too much now. They've got to keep the pace. As we see, new set of legs coming on, including Emily Irons. Oh, clean break. It's a lovely gap that from Emily Irons, and the pass is away. It's a beautiful score. Good score. Simple. Wonderful setup. Sometimes that's all you need again, and that is the result of adding the pace back into the sub box move. If uh, you as a defence aren't quite prepared there, it's, um, it's what can happen. And it takes a good attack as well to notice where the gaps are, though. Uh, yeah, it's just, it's just simple things, isn't it? Um, obviously, Scott getting a little bit more tired. Amy Martin with the ball there. Um, very, very experienced player again, but just, it's just simple things. Um, pulling players across and, and getting in the gaps, uh, leading to breaks and, and picking through. It's amazing, really, on when you consider it is six players per side and then how relatively large a, rug, a touch rugby pitch is for six players yeah. how finding the space sometimes can be very difficult but then yeah. when you do and find the right space it does pay off yeah I'm lucky there uh, David, <laughs> David, David, <laughs> I think we've got a player essentially begging to the referee for that one yeah uh, just it was a, an attempt at a dive and it just came off a bit a bit low um, it's a good, good oh, attempt that from Susanna Brownlee, uh, Brownie uh, I think uh, as you say appealing to Rog Neighbours for that one but uh, now nothing's going to move Rod, no. <laughs> uh, uh, Suzanne, so uh, sorry about that one. But England, unfortunately, are going to have to continue defending. They're off the mark at their tap here, so Scotland have another opportunity to try and close the gap. It's a bit like Groundhog Day here. The, the, mixed open, uh, the Scotland Open uh, men's team have left and the, the mixed open team have came. Well, to tell you what, lovely to see them supporting their team. But so, as we go back to the game, it's a lovely touch there from England again Scotland's throwing it down right here um, looking for the wing right wide um, and they're pulling the English defence really wide and, and looking for the gaps in the middle like we said earlier um, the, the gaps are quickly closing uh, another penalty for Scotland there offside not walking up quick enough yeah, so uh, I think their first penalty was outside the seven, but yeah. England are going to have to be careful here not to give too many penalties away in the seven, as um, England, uh, sorry, Scotland attempt. <laughs> Suzanne Brownie once again is uh, looking at the referee saying, hold on a minute, can I have this score, please? Uh, I think she was looking at it, that the player was offside and just trying to make a touch on her, and she went, no, I'm not taking this touch. And then another player came across <laughs> it and touched her. <laughs> Uh, it's still brilliant play from Scotland they're using their time well and we have again got a second penalty now against England they are going to have to be very careful here another penalty will mean they'll go down to five players Amy Martin coming in giving them a little game plan got six fresh touches so she wants it she wants her move ran and uh, ready to, to get the ball wide and score yeah we've also got uh, Grace Burt in the middle here now on the ball it's oh, a lovely over. long ball oh, oh unlucky. It's unlucky that that was a wonderfully uh, positioned pass, though. Really good vision, that, from Grace Burton. Hannah Speed on the wing there, just didn't quite get it. Yeah, unfortunately, slightly over her head, but, um, as I say... We all have those days when it goes over our head. Well, exactly. But, um, it's, uh, as I say, it's a wonderful setup from Scotland. They're certainly still in this game. If they can uh, make sure they keep the mistakes down and keep playing their game. As England, Mimi Patton on a scoop. And... Bit confusion there. Uh, player was onside, but was offside to start, and then, and I think there was a penalty came from that. Um, just stopping the player on the right way they wanted to go. Yeah. So uh, the second touch was onside, but it was the attempted first touch by Scotland that's given the penalty away. So England now with six touches to use. It's a it's a really good advantage to get when you get six touches on the line. A lot to do, especially when you're. A bit tired, and you're on your fifth touch in the scoreline. Well, we were saying this earlier, of course, in touch rugby, there is no such thing as a deliberate knock-on. Um, but um, if you do slap the ball down, it essentially means you've got to defend for six more, which is harder work than it sounds. Yeah. Um, it's not the ideal option at all. 
but would you rather take the chance and get six more touches or give a score absolutely 100% but uh, England unfortunately have given their possession away as a result of a forward pass and uh, once again on this near side that's good hands there Oh, we've seen Katie Fielding from England on the, this near side wing doing the defensive work on the Scottish box Scotland were about to inject the pace and uh, England once again giving away penalties here and that's, that's what's keeping Scotland in the game England need to keep their discipline up Scotland are definitely get a bit tired didn't get a chance to sub off there for a good few minutes um, and now they're, they're a bit tired in the sub box don't really know what to do um, just they're chasing the game a little bit um, but when they get back on the front foot they start the second half hopefully they'll, they'll get a bit of gas in them and they can run about it's a lovely sweeper play from Scotland there it's well read by England now good footwork again though from Leah um, like we said very very quite fast player um, and able to, to get her way around the pitch yeah I thought she might have been in then but touch again made by Mimi Patton of England it's um Luke Gladding's doing a very good job there, but unfortunately it's not come off there for Scotland again. As you say, both teams now, it's just these small mistakes creeping in. And uh, did I see some encouragement there from Mother by any chance, Gregor? No, it was um, it was my, my brother's girlfriend was, was on the phone saying, who let Gregor have the microphone? Ah, well... I'm very glad, happy we did, otherwise it would have been me on my own all day, and even then I'm only here for two-thirds of the game, so um, <laughs> thank you for being here. And, uh, it's good to great, get some great Scottish insight as well yeah. uh, onto the game. Um, but as we were saying, it, both sides here, they just need to stop letting these mistakes creep in, keep the discipline, and uh, try and stick to their game plans, because it's going a bit awry here at the moment. As Scotland playing really tight out the box there, and then opening it right up, lots of space. Anna Crispy's in her footwork again. Oh, unlucky. Can't get the hands on the ball. That's the last play of the half, I take it. England looking to try and do something with this. The space is there. But uh, in trying to do something, the pass is forward, unfortunately. So we're going to continue we to play. We continue on. And uh, this isn't what England wanted. It's good work here from Chris to try and get the ball back. Oh, her lucky. winger wasn't there, though. Robson not quite there, and we will finish the half there as it were and uh, we will be back with you very very shortly <laughs> So, hello ladies and gentlemen, hope you're still with us, enjoying our coverage of the Autumn International Series here at Broughton Park RFC in Manchester. Currently halfway through the second Women's Opens game of the day between England and Scotland. England currently leading 3-1 in this game. Just to give you an update on what's to come through the rest of the day, uh, after this game we've got three more this afternoon. Your next game will be at 3.30. That's a men's open, our last men's open game of the day between Scotland and Ireland. Uh, 4.20, you can catch our last women's open game of the day, which is England versus Wales. And final game of the day, mixed open England versus Wales at 10 past five. <laughs> Do you remember you were like, 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 you were like
So we've got 20 minutes to go then in this game between England and Scotland. I'm delighted I'm still joined by Gregor Whiteman. Gregor, what's your take on that first 20 minutes? Uh, it was it was actually quite a, a structured game from from both teams. Scotland let their, their foot off the gas in the, a little bit at the end of the half. Um, presumably because they were getting a bit tired. Um, but hopefully from the start of the second half we'll pick it back up. I thought there was a lot more scores in it, but there is only three. Um, three for one. Um, Scotland can quite easily bring it back. England can quite easily take it away. 100%. It'd be interesting to see here how this 20 minutes coming up plays out because certainly towards the end of that second half we could see the mistakes slightly creeping in from both sides as teams got tired and discipline as well is going to be key in this second half. Yeah, um, it'll be interesting to see who, who comes off first, um, who takes first blood in the second half, um, whether it's Scotland with a nice sweep and play or England with a scoop through the middle. Um, it'll be interesting. Yeah, interestingly, in most, uh, I think all of, if not two, of England's scores have been off driving off the box and finding that gap initially, where Scotland have been setting up their moves very well in the seven. We've got uh, the Scottish sub box nearest to us here. Gregor, if you were part of that team tour right now, was there anything particular you'd be saying? Uh, just, just be hyping them back up again. Uh, loss, loss of mo motivation at the end. Um, Hannah Crisp, they're doing that for us. Um, but it's just a, a case of getting them back G'd up again ready to go absolutely um, absolutely and keeping the head focused 100% um, definitely both teams want to get the energy back up here yeah um, the last thing you want in a test match is to let your head go absolutely 100% 100% and both teams are going to want this England of course um, currently remain unbeaten in the series but Scotland here if they keep their heads are definitely within the right here of uh trying to take this one and uh, we will definitely see what happens so as we get ready for the second half of this game and officials whoever wants it I take it um, if Scotland want it more than England Scotland will take the win absolutely 100% um, got to say that they were doing very well to capitalise on England's ill discipline yeah. early in the first half but once again we see this very well structured pod of crisp and uh, it's uh, Katie San Juan. Interesting to see that um, Kate, uh, Hannah Crisp has moved up to the link now. She has, you're right, very right, it's a good point. Uh, as they're also joined by Lucy Witherspoon there in the middle. And number nine, Fiona Craig. That's it's a, great a ball. lovely long ball. Oh, I didn't cut back, it's a good score. <laughs> very good score. Wonderful score. That once again is a lovely setup from this pod. Scotland, lovely score from Hannah Spear there. And as we said at half time. If Scotland want to go out and get this, they can go and get it. Very true. Maybe that's why they put Hannah Crisp on the link. Um, now she's back into mid position. Maybe that's all it was for. Get the first score of the way. They certainly got their game plan right there. And uh, England now will need to make sure that uh, they try and score and create that gap. Scotland will want it back and they'll want to get on level terms with England here. Very notable that this is only Hannah Spears' second senior international tournament. Really? Uh, yeah. Good so on she, her. she was playing under 15s for Scotland um, at the Junior Championships in France in 2019. And then Big Bad Covid hit us, and Hannah Spear is now playing for Scotland. But saying that, England have got the score back there. It goes back to two point difference. It's a lovely play. Out, to the, out wide as well for England I think both teams noticing that the space does exist there if they can get the good passes away yes very much true it's like we spoke about in the, the first half players drawing them in and then passing it out wide um, just draw draw the winger in and get over the top that's what we saw there 100% 100% it's, um, Scotland won't have been happy with that and they're going to want to try and now score themselves again as we see uh, Grace Burton again corner shots in the middle here alongside Amy Martin big sweeper coming cut back inside it's a great shout that by Grace Burton can they get the ball down score. the grinding work wonderful score. Hannah Spear two in the second half and uh, it's tit for tat at the moment here at uh, Broughton Park FC back to one and indeed we are back to one that was different pod this time it was indeed. But, Amy uh, Martin pod. That was very good though. It very was, well set up. It was Hannah Spear again making herself available out there on the wing. As always, it's the space. Take them one way, put it back the other. 100%. 100% as we now see. M. Irons 
playing alongside her pod here today. Pulling the shots in there, looking to go for space now. Six again. It's, uh, still very well shut that from Scotland. It was what needed to be done, otherwise the space was here for England on the right-hand side. You caught Jedi Sam Wan down the side, teeing the girls up still. Just what they need. Absolutely. If I was on the field right now, that's all I'd be wanting. A little bit of motivation. Need to keep the energy high here for both teams. England though still with touches to use. More Scotland support coming back up to where we are. <laughs> and it's a wonderful long ball Why? that. Oh, oh unlucky. that's unlucky that for England. You wonder if the, the space was there, if they'd run wider, if they would have got that score. 100%. It's, um, they're looking for the right things. I think yeah. both teams noticing that the space is there up the wing. Uh, both teams quite tight in defence. It's, it's about trying to get that long ball away. As Scotland now come to the box. Oh, and, that's unlucky. Good um, subset. Unfortunately, I don't think this pod were waiting to have to... Uh, a defend but um, we mentioned earlier it's uh, those small mistakes that we don't want to creep into the game England are trying to use this themselves to sub M Irons might go on her own Emily Irons for England a very good score that space once again 100% space. 100% I think Scotland got complacent assuming that uh, England were just going to take it easy as they went to the box and Emily Irons went nope I'm going to find that gap and go and score there are lots of praise in the English sub box right now very good play Lots of tired bodies still, though, both teams. I was going to say, M now uh, very much taking a break by looks of it over yeah. on the far sub box. But that's all it is, very good set. Um, bit of communication, bit of space. Perfect potion for success. Scotland on the attack now. Yeah, Scotland still using their sweeper plays, trying to create the space as they got coming round. It's Not a pick up again. from Grace Burton. Robson, a very good score. Wonderful, wonderful. Robson and all day has had a habit of having that space available to her on the wing, and it's beautifully, beautifully poised by Grace Burton. Straight out to there, and Scotland again staying in this game. That's that's all it is. Is it back to one difference now? Yeah. Unfortunately, we've lost we've lost our feed here, um, so uh, unfortunately we're not going to be able to report the score for the rest of the game. But but nevertheless we will still continue to commentate um, and uh, go from there as we see Sophie Buffnock for England setting up a sweep of play for England themselves Scotland just using that shuffle defence shutting everything down quite well they the are first indeed. time and then I think they're just letting the foot off the gas for the second set 100% it's um, the space did definitely run out for England there now seeing 33 play coming in. The space is there on the far wing. That but, uh, was same, same play as what they tried last time. It is indeed. The, um, that was the right way to go. But unfortunately, the pass not coming off that time. They're doing everything right. Both teams. Everything right. We've got 5-4 to England currently. So it is down to one. Cheers, Kev. Someone carrying a table down there. I don't know what they're doing. Mm. Ever professional. Ever yeah. professional, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, England now again going to receive some possession after a Scottish mistake in the Scottish half. And uh, England using it to get some new legs on. Scotland very static now in defence. They need to be careful not to give England the space. Scotland doing a lot in their own half this, this second half. Um, a lot of defensive side and um, just small mistakes potentially because they're tired and um, potentially just because they're, they're not paying that much attention um, I think that there's a lot of work on for both teams but there's a lot of positives for both teams as well 100% it's, um, um, you're right though Scotland are spending a lot of time in the half of the pitch that they don't want to be in really right now as M. Irons now looking for the space here on the right hand side attempts the pass lucky. back to Susanna Hudson but uh doesn't come off and Pretty good uh, shut the fence there from Scotland it was very good um, for forcing the error and um, making, making her throw the pass that was a little bit to the knees and things like that yeah and England doing well here again to slow this down Scotland need to inject the pace as we see this pod once again from Scotland led by Crisp and uh, it's going to be have the space on the outside they've noticed it are they going to score here 
What a touch that was from M. Irons. Blinking Eck. Otherwise, we would have seen a wonderful Scottish score nonetheless. So, um, almost wanted them to score there for that one. It would have been lovely to see them score for that to bring the game back to 5 all. But M. Irons, wonderful, wonderful diving touch to save the try there. And England then coming back on. So we see Mimi Patton on the ball. But penalty is given against them for an off the mark on this occasion it's these disciplinary points it's this these little bits trying to just make sure that uh, they don't creep into your game too much Scotland keeping the players on the pitch they've got at the moment they're going to want some go forward here they're going to need to get close to that try line if they're going to want to score I was uh, just, just checking there um, a bit unfortunate last week I wasn't able to watch this game um, but Scotland are playing on a very good performance compared to last week. 10-3 they got beat last week, two weeks ago, sorry. Excellent. Um, Excellent. And now their points difference of one. Um, that's a, a very, very good um, improvement from Scotland. Potentially a lack of score from England or defence from Scotland has been a lot better. I know that the Scotland team have been putting on a lot of effort, um, team building, things like that. Um, just get themselves a bit more together. Maybe that's what they were lacking a little while back, but just getting getting the basics right and um, defense and attack both and um, things like communication team building exercises Eddie Sama is really good at that and um, bringing the, the points difference to one instead of seven absolutely it's um as you, as you say the score the scoreboard currently Scotland already having scored more tries than they did in this game two weeks ago I think it's testament to how well they're playing and how well they're coming on as a side and I'm sure they all definitely feel, certainly with the scores level, they're still in this. But once again, unfortunately, we've seen a handling error there that uh, they didn't need. It's unfortunate. Player, players coming off the park and they're, they're a bit um, disoriented, it looks like. Um, I, I think the, the tiredness is really now setting in, um, get, getting a bit, bit on top of them, getting a bit worked up. But the time will come. Uh, apart, um, yes, we're at five all here, ladies and gentlemen. So Scotland now looking to get ahead. They want to score next. Oh. Nick Ladding again had a running legs on, wanted that ball, but the pass wasn't quite there for her on this occasion. A lot going on in that England sub box. There's players that they're, they're having a bit of a, a hairy merry time. Um, coming off quite tired, but then they look like they've got a lot of fresh legs in the box as well. They are not enjoying this scoreline at the moment, though. This isn't where England will have expected to be. As, in, as they set up the fake sweep to play, looking for the pass off here. Will they get it away? Yes, they Good will. There, yes. Unfortunately, they're not able to get a touch in. They're chasing left, right, and centre from Scotland, but it's good. It's good to see that they're still in it. 100%, 100%. As we see there, Katie Fielding finishing that off for uh, uh, England, but it was uh, a wonderful setup there by Danny Gregory. And uh, England now once again go one ahead. As we see this pod of Crisp, Craig, and San Juan looking to get back into this game for Scotland. Chris might make this, it's a lovely dive, but some great touches from the England side. M. Irons there, working it very hard. Can't her name a lot today. She's, All over the place. She's been doing very well. We had that score, of course, from her and try saving score, but Scotland. Touches in there, I think. Yeah. Unlucky that. It was again the right way to go, though, which is where the space was. You can see as well in the backfield, Scotland men's and Ireland men's ready for the next game. Starting to get their warm up on. I should be doing that too, as soon as I'm meant to be down there with a whistle for that game. You're reffing that one? Yes. Oh, I'm going to bully you. I wouldn't do such a thing. Careful, sir, is all I would say to that. Sir. <laughs> oh, the referee's going to take you. Nah, that would be a good game coming up. So, yes, ladies and gentlemen, at 3.30, we're going to see men's open game between... Ireland and Scotland 
Nearly close there. Uh, but England using up their six touches on this occasion. They thought they had scored, they did. But Scotland are defending very well. Um, it is on their own scoreline, but they're doing it very well. Their attack just not quite sharp enough today. Um, maybe even just in this game, but their defence is playing really well. They are, they are. They just need to get this momentum back into their attack and they need to be injecting the pace. If you notice here, all three players that came on there from the box very much running laterally with no forward movement initially. So it takes a lot more effort to gain the pace now. But as we're seeing, Scotland coming. It's unlucky. Scoop through was good. It was a very good scoop through. But uh, unfortunately not quite worked out once again for Scotland. Maybe the, the subset that, that Scotland wanted. And just to get that, that bit of momentum back into themselves and um, a bit of motivation, we can do this situation. Absolutely, and I'm sure Eddie Sanyuan down there is going to be um, adding the momentum. Certainly very happy with that because England once again have forced, uh, have conducted an error. So uh, Eddie there, very much clapping at that one because he wants back in the game. Scotland looking to try and capitalise here to get the six more. It's not going to come off for Scotland on this occasion, which is such a shame. I think uh, Scotland will be geeing themselves up here. We've only got six, five, six minutes left now of this game. They can still win this, let alone just uh, score again to, to come even. England as well, slow off the box. They need to inject the pace here. Bit of confusion. As, uh, they come now, scoop here from Gregory, looking for the space. She's found the space. the space. Can she get the pass away? Yes, she can. That's the scoop they were looking for before. It absolutely is, and... Uh, it's wonderfully, wonderfully done that by da Danny Gregory. Just kept going. I think she was expecting to feel a touch from a defensive player, but it never came. Don't you lack of communication there? It's a potential. It's a potential. It's, uh, we're seeing some tired bodies out there, but it's, uh, well finished as well by Katie Fielding. Yeah. Here we go then for Scotland. Currently two down. See what they can do to try and get into this game. Big ladding, working hard. Scotland is there. Not quite the score they were looking for, but they got the penalty. They have got the penalty. It's an offside from England, so the touch was good, but uh, other players in the English side there uh, not being able, to, uh, not making it offside well enough. Here comes another sweeper play then from Scotland. So unlucky. Leah Gladding, unfortunately, not able to capitalise that. Scotland got up to really wide. and may go for that sweep play again. Apparently, we're being told that uh, we've been getting a score wrong all game. So... So we may or may not be getting the score wrong. It, it's, it's what happens when our feed goes. This is the thing, see? Yeah. And when you're late to the game because you've been refereeing beforehand. Yeah. We'll just commentate on what we can see, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Once again, totally and utterly professional here. 100%. Um, I'm under the impression that this game is a lot closer. Uh, we've got Wales, Ireland, Women's on the pitch two uh, over in the back. And um, we've been told that 9-4, potentially, maybe the score. Um, but we'll get back to you on that one. But we hope it's 9 4, or we sound silly. Awesome. Um, unfortunately, here, Scotland again. Handling error, not quite worked out on this occasion. crowd over there getting a bit <laughs> excited when they get a penalty. It's what we like to see. I don't think anyone likes getting a penalty these days, eh? Lateral backward running there uh, just to get that, those players off the field. 
Uh, that's what it is, it's tiredness, I think. Good defence from England again. Sending those two players up, shutting it down quickly. Lucy Witherspoon, Hannah Crisp, and her, oh, Hannah Spear, unlucky not able to get her hands to that. Right, ladies and gentlemen, for the last couple of minutes then, I'm going to leave you in the capable hands of Gregor Whiteman. Gregor, don't give me too much chip on this next game. That would be much appreciated, please. Ladies and gentlemen, three more games still to come this afternoon. Hopefully you can stay with us for those. Thank you, Jack. Have a good one. Yes, yeah, so Scotland back in attack there on their own line. I'm um, trying to get out their own half. Um, they've been looking at that for all game, I think. A um, few, few line breaks um, working in their favour, but a lot more defence in their hands this time. Good hands there from Amy Martin. It's unlucky. Just not having the players there, Susan Brownie. England's slowing the game down now. Not an awful long time left. Um, probably just looking to, to run the clock down. Um, not too bothered if they get another score or not. Good touch there. Offside, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, so England probably just looking to, to run the clock down um, and get the game over with if they're in the lead. Um, as we said, we're not too sure what the score is these days. Um, but it's been a very good game nonetheless. the game there, Scotland v Wales. Um, it was a good one, lots of defence. Um, up next we have Scotland Men's Open versus Ireland Men's Open. Uh, we'll be with you in a few minutes. So the, the next game is Scotland v Ireland on pitch one here in Manchester. Bruton Rugby Club um, in Manchester, not the Scottish flag. Um, they will be tapping off at half past three. Thank <laughs> you. 
Welcome back ladies and gentlemen with about one minute till tap off. We have Ireland men's open in the near sub box and Scotland men's open in the far sub box. Ladies and officials, this is your one minute warning. One minute till tap off. So as the players take the field, we have Ireland in white and Scotland in the traditional blue. Players and officials, 30 seconds, please take to the fields, ready to play. For this game, Ireland will be attacking from left to right as we look at it, and Scotland will be defending from right to left on the first half off. Players and officials, stand by. As the game is about to get underway, Scotland take the field. Scotland women clearing the sub box. Taking first blood, who will it be? Ireland or Scotland? <laughs> Alan coming off with a very aggressive start, trying to punch it up the middle and get the move, the sweeper move coming into play. Good score there from Ireland. Found the gap, brought it down. First score coming there from number nine, John Ennis. Good start for Ireland. Scotland coming off with an aggressive start as well. Standing still a little bit. Scotland looking to capitalise on this opportunity with the space wide and get one back on them, on, on Ireland, and stay in the game. Um, unfortunate last week, Scotland won by a few touchdowns, but the work comes for this week are... Score, much like that. Um, all referee confirmation is needed. Score is good. Alan coming up very strong. Scotland obviously hoping that they can get one back now. 
um, with, their, with their strong set. Swapping quite regularly, it seems. Um, Ireland 2, um, Scotland 1. And then lock up with the ball now taken in for a quick heel. Good defence there from Ireland, shutting in from both sides. Cammy Livingston going for a second. Apologies, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I've been informed that there was no commentary coming through there. Currently, Ireland 2, Scotland 1. Attack here. Unlucky there. <laughs> so, if you're just joining us, Ireland men's open versus Scotland men's open. Good interception there from Ireland. Camille Livingston on the chase. Number 13, Matt Cannerson with the score there, running the length of the field. Full 70 yards, that is. Very good. Great, great attack. Defence into attack. Going back into the defensive line, ready for the next set. Apologies, ladies and gentlemen. Um, we've only just been informed that there was no sound um, for the first few minutes of the game. Um, but hopefully, if you're just joining us, you can hear us now. Scotland on the attack now, down by two. in the score zone so the scoop through unlucky there Cam Hart not able to collect Ireland trying to go quickly referee telling them no now, Ireland going hard, Marshall McLeod making a the touch there, it's a good attacking set from Ireland, it gets six again, Scotland not quite able to gather the ball there, not able to let it go to ground, so Ireland return with a set of six. This might just be what Ireland need to, to make it a three points difference, um, just now it's only two, but it might be short lived. Great ball out there, unlucky not to get there. Number 13 again, but it's fine. Scotland with the attack now. We assume that they're going to drive it up the field just so that they can get the, the ball into the, the score zone again. What do you want? Ireland calling for an overstep. Not able to get the decisions they want.
great to see the Scottish support out now. Um, Scottish mixed open and women's open up on the deck here with us. That's unlucky there for Scotland, just making it six. Not quite able to get there. Island roll ball on the seven. We'll try and counter attack now. Scotland getting the overstep call they were feeling for. It's unfortunate when players are driving up the line like that when just not quite able to stop themselves quick enough, don't want to take pace out of their attack and just not able to stop themselves when they get a penalty against them. It's unfortunate, but it's what has to happen. Chris Rag making the dive to the line now. Finlock with the ball. Ross Taylor out wide. Got Cammy Livingston even wider. Chris Rag back on the ball. Makes the touch. Ross Taylor's got the ball. Into the score zone. Good score there from Scotland. Good score there from Scotland, making the points deficit one now. 3 2 is a score to Ireland. Scotland still in their blue. Scotland's Monica Wallace will be looking for a stronger attack and a stronger defence from the Scotland boys today. Um, unfortunately, getting beat um, last week or two weeks ago, my bad, um, against Ireland. Um, but Scotland coming out of the block strong this half. Um, Lewis Burns on the ball. It's unlucky for Cam Hart. Look for the line break. Cam Livingston getting double teamed. Scotland attacking with intent now. It's a good ball over the top. Unlucky Cam Livingston not able to retain it. And trying to go quick, they're trying to sub. Scotland's defence looking really strong. Finlock putting on a good touch there. Allen attacking wide, looks like they've got the score. Got the touch in well in Scotland from the sidelines of both teams. Ireland thinking they're getting the score, Scotland thinking they made the touch. Going after and roars. Scotland appealing, not getting what they want. Good score for Ireland. Score coming from number 15, Sean Balance there. Chris Wright coming off the attack quick. And again, Marshall McLeod, Calum Smith, to Lewis Burns. Taking it in hard, touch on ball. Scotland just having to slow the game down a little bit. Touch was on the ball, got to retain the ball. Scotland's Josh Lee, number 19, sitting really wide, looking for that pass outside to Ireland's winger. Cam Smith taking it in, Marsh McLeod to the dive. Chris Rugby touched. Attacking again, Chris Rag. Lewis Burns unfortunately getting touched. Scotland back in defence now, pushing across. Allen looking to sub. Ireland a little bit standstillish, not able to get on as quickly as they wanted to. Scotland still in the fence, pushing across. This is good from Scotland. The fence is a lot stronger than what it was two weeks ago. Marshall McLeod making a good cover over touch there. Ireland having to slow the game down now. And still up by two, hoping to make it three. Scotland trying to close that gap. Good touch there from Lewis Burns causing the pass to go to the ground. Yeah. 
Chris Wright taking over to the sub box. Scotland trying to sub now. Getting the faster players off and faster players on. Marshall McLeod taking it out into touch. Camp Hart unluckily. Ross Taylor running hard. Using his footwork. See that off not. Scotland looking to get that score there. Not sure that they got the grounding though. This is Scotland's new winger. Scotland getting a penalty, not quite the score they were looking for, but they got the penalty. That's just much. Six touches on the line. It's a lot to defend, especially once you've been defending all the way from the top side of the field. Finlock getting the ball, trying to set up a sweeper move, it looks like. Alan shutting it down well. Must keep moving in that seven metre zone. Unlucky there, Finlock getting touched. Scotland sitting really wide in this attack. Just one long ball could do what they need. They're going to take it in, hopefully. Take it in and go close side. And then long. Not quite. Yes, it's coming. They're going to go out. Long coming, very too long. Unlucky there. Scotland getting the score they wanted. Then lock on the board. And they score down to one difference. 3 2 to Ireland. Scotland going to have to defend hard now, keep the score down. <laughs> and attacking hard again. Again, touches in, hoping for the score. Number 13, Matt Canerson for Ireland, sitting really wide as well, looking for that long ball. Unfortunate the move breaking down, not as well as really wanted it to. Going to try and attack again. Good touch there. Making it six for Ireland. Marshall McLeod taking the ball, going to try and attack hard now. Scotland pulling it wide, looking to sub off. Josh Lee with the ball. Josh Lee having to do a little bit extra work there to get the team back on the field. Cam Hart taking it wide and back in. Cam Hart scooping. To Ross Taylor, back round to Cam Hart. That's six unfortunate for Scotland. Scotland back in defence now, unlucky. Allen attacking hard. Matt Canerson taking the ball and then, and then scooping up. That's good. Ireland attacking really hard, Scotland defending really well. Both teams will be happy with their performances first half. That's really good play from Ireland there. Just what they wanted. Just switch, switch, it open up the gap for that one man to go in. Tries to go for Ireland with John Ennis once again. But not a performance for us today. Scotland back on the counter attack now. Looking to go wide. Marshall McLeod getting a bit angry now. Just for that heavy touch coming in. No, 
unfortunately here, uh, Marsh McLeod calling for that heavy touch, and then one player's injured. Um, Ireland not not too happy. I think they're going to get a penalty for the heavy touch. Yeah, heavy touch there coming in from Marsh McLeod. It's unfortunate. Uh, it looked to be a game incident, but it's okay. Scott back in the fence, Chris Rag. Chris Rag appealing. He says it's not his fault. Chris Rag pushing up again, forcing them to stay wide. Good touch there from Chris Rag, diving across. Chris Rag's a phenomenal player, for, like, playing for six pack down in Scot up in Scotland, my bad. Um, able to play with a lot of different players, very diverse player. To play men's and mixed open. Um, was at World Cup. Um, phenomenal player, great with the ball in hand and great without the ball in hand as well. Um, in defence, great leader and knows the game very well. Ross Taylor driving it in hard. Finlock picking it up. Unlucky Finlock getting touched just on the foot there, tried to beat him with the footwork, couldn't quite get there. Driving it up. Last play of the half, and that's half time. Ireland still to be up by two. End of the half. We'll back shortly. five metres away from the pitches. Uh, referees remind me to uh, give the crowd and uh, supporters announcements to make sure you're about five metres away.
officials, this is your two minute warning. Ladies and officials, two minutes. Seconds, players and officials, 30 seconds. Please start taking to the field, ready to play. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Scotland Men's Open versus Ireland Men's Open. Second half here. Um, Scotland attacking from left to right in their traditional blue and white. Uh, very good players game so far. Scotland attacking and defending very well. Ireland counter attacking very well as well. Very positive game for, for these two teams. Um, a lot of work on from, from two weeks ago for both teams, um, but clearly having a good time out on this field. We're in Broughton Park in Manchester. Uh, it's been a glorious day, a lot of touch rugby, and still a lot more to come. Scotland on the attack then. Lewis Burns trying to drive it in for the first score of the second half. Um, unfortunately, not able to get there. Marshall McLeod coming in, looking for a move to be set up. Scotland forcing Ireland to do what they want. Got under another bit of pressure here. A lucky from Marshall McLeod, they're getting touched. Allen looking to sub here. Scott and defender very well. Chris Ragley, a very experienced player, as we said. Allen attacking with a lot of pace. Half caught, unfortunately. We see that quite a lot these days when players are scooping through, they, they call for the offside player, but unfortunately they get caught as half, so the player that's picked up the ball. Chris Rag attacking there with intent, that's very good from him. Cam Smith as well, Josh Lee powering off the field. Unlucky for Scotland. Some would wonder if Cam Hart had just played the ball there if the referee would have noticed. And attacking with intent again. Good try scorer number 13, Matt Canerson. Playing the ball there. Unlucky for Ireland. Let's see what the call is. Heavy touch and then foot in the rock. It's unfortunate for Scotland. Ireland thought they had lost the ball. Both boxes probably having a lot to talk about at, at that half-time break there. Um, Ireland certainly looking to keep their foot, uh, foot on the gas. Scotland hoping to pick up the game a little bit more. Um, it's unfortunate for Scotland, they're playing really well. Um, the move just not getting a few things their way. They're, they're defending very well. Cam Hart was called offside there. Then Ross Moyers made the touch. That's good there from Scotland. Backing up your teammates. Alan making a sub. Scotland coming off the back of last week with a lot of work ons, um, especially against Ireland. Um, they, they felt a bit hard done by in their game, but seems to be coming off and having a lot better game this week.
Unfortunately there for Cam Hart, not able to make that touch. Score there for Ireland. Scotland looking to get on the front foot again. Try to go for Ireland again. Number 15, Sean Balance. It's had a good game, Sean has. Played very well. Attacking on the front foot as much as he can. Getting his hands on the ball as much as he can. Alan sending shooters up. That's unfortunate for Chris Rag. Marshall McLeod. Chris Rag taking it in to Lewis Burns. Gap there from Marshall McLeod. That's a great score from Scotland. Little set up. Number eight, Marshall McLeod. Scotland coming out this second half quite well. I'm fortunate to get our first score against them, but coming back on the front foot again, and it's really strong from Scotland. Defence and attack. And they'll look to get back in the lead here. Cam Livingston spoke about him a lot in the first half. Three tries scoring opportunities, one of three. Playing very well, very versatile player, playing for the Galaxy Scotland team. Good touch there. Unfortunate they're not to get the call. Must have called no touch. That's a good score. Matt Kennerson we see there just taking a drink and getting back on the field. What trooper. Managing to, to stay going, keep keep himself going the the whole game. Scoring tries, defending well, controlling the team, you would say. That's good from Scotland, good attack. It's unlucky to be touched. Play from the wing now, lots of space on this field. Unlucky there, touching pass from Chris Rag. Scotland defending really tight, trying to shut off this sub move. No touch called. That's interesting there. No touch called, and the, the referee called play on. Maybe the, the touching player was the, the attacker. That's interesting. Marshall McLeod there was called offside and then moved onside, calling a touch. Including his case. Martin McLeod getting a bit animated there. Knows the game very well, knows how to, to get on the right side of the referee. Maybe not the, the best to get on the wrong side of the referee. Welcome ladies and gentlemen, if you are just joining us, we are in Broughton Park in Manchester. Where we have Scotland versus Ireland mixed open. Scotland attacking, well, currently defending from left to right, Ireland attacking from right to left. Um, Scotland down by two, Ireland playing very well, Scotland playing very well, defending very hard and attacking with a lot of intent, good to see these days. Next up we have Wales versus England Women's Open, that'll be a good game to watch, good contest last week. Um, they were the under-18s champions, England, um, in 2019, the last time we were able to get an under-18s tournament. That year in Paris, everything from under-15s to 18s, mixed boys and girls, were all England v Wales. And England came out on top of all of those uh, matches. Um, and a lot of these players playing for both teams. Scotland defending really well, he's really tight. Alan with that wide man if they want it. Got pace now. Unlucky pass not going to hand. Alan sitting really deep in the defensive line. We wonder if that's part of their attacking strategy. Cam Hart taking it in fast. Now going off. 
She's got on sub pattern playing really well today. It's the last game for Scotland today. Played England and Wales so far today. Unfortunately, they're turnover to Ireland. Ross Moore defending really well. Ireland, when we see we're subbing, they're, they're def attacking very close to their touchline. Scotland, not so much. Ireland and Scotland both appealing for what's going on here. Obstruction penalty to Ireland now. Tension from the sub move. Referee asking Ireland to hurry up. Callum Smith getting trotted on in the line there. Alan number eight, Jamie Maher, try scorer so far in the day. And the number one, going for the score, Ben Phelan. And still attacking this line. Chris Wright making a good touch there. Making it five. Jamie Maher going out again. Chris Rag pushing the attack wide. That's six for Wales. Ireland, sorry. Scott making plenty of yards there. Fifth touch it is. Goes wide, unlucky pass not going to hand. Scott playing really well in this second half. Just unfortunate they're not getting everything their way. Ireland choosing to sub off again. The fresher the legs, the faster they run. Ball goes out wide, good touch there from the Scotland winger. Can't quite see who's on that wing over there. Unlucky there, pass gone wide. Just not able to get to Mac Henderson again, number 13. Good try score for Ireland. That pick off try in the first half, at the very end of the half. Making it the 70 yards without being touched. Scotland put on a good chase though. Scott making lots of yards, Finlock there. Very good player. That's good, well played for Scotland. Throwing into Matt Kennerson. Um, probably not in intentionally, but getting a new set of six. Some would say the most demoralising thing to have in touch, getting a new set of six. Lewis Burns making the yards, using the feet. Six again to Scotland. This is good play from Scotland, forcing the other error from Ireland. Good score there from Scotland, it seems to be. Callum Smith there. Very good player himself. To touch for an awful long time. His brother Finley Smith is playing for the mixed open team today. Um, both play for the same team. Very good players, especially when they're on the pitch together. Um, and when you've got a player that can execute tries like that, why wouldn't you have him in your team? Scotland sub box looking a bit serious still, um, trying to keep their foot on the gas. Um, probably not too happy with a few of the mistakes they've made, but. 
getting there in the end. Just one score in and out. Still to come is Wales versus England Women's Open and our final Ireland uh, Wales v England Men's Open as far as I'm aware at the end of the day today um, so stay tuned for that um, still a lot more to come I'm a bit unsure what's going on here some would wonder if there is a time wasting tactic in place um, Alan player in the back of the end goal um, looks to be in a, a fair bit of pain let's hope he's okay six touches there Scotland very happy with that Scotland looking for the penalty there for kicking the ball away very unintentional Scotland on the attack again, just crossed halfway. Very good play from Chris Rack, dragging the defence back, looking for the points. That's unlucky, just a little bit of miscommunication from Chris Rack and Lewis Burns there. Ireland looking to capitalise on this. Loss of control there. No, penalty for hard touch. Scotland a bit unfortunate here. Um, just the way they're, they're putting in touches, maybe maybe not the best way. Um, very good defence though. Um, giving away penalties, potentially too many, but um, defending that really well and getting the, the, the ball back in the end um, and defending sets like that. Unfortunate getting a new set of six to Ireland there. Offside call from the referee in the middle. Scotland with a fresh set, Ireland with a fresh set of six on Scotland's scoreline. Um, good touch there. Loss of control. Yes, loss of control. Number three for Ireland, Ben O'Connell. That's unfortunate from him. So uh, joining me now is Callum Smith's brother, Finlay Smith. Um, Finlay plays for the next Open. How did your games go today, Finlay? Yeah, no, we've, uh, we've had very, two tough games. A uh, really good game against England in the morning, and the game against Wales was a, a very tough game as well. Both teams were uh, a credit to themselves, really talented and really good teams. Would you say you've got a lot of work on this week? Um, better games than last week? Definitely felt better than last week, 100%. Um, really positive things to take away, a few things you know, negative to take away, but equally more positive than negative, so really, really happy with the Columbus already so far. Good, you've got another game at the end of the day today? Yes, um, glad to see that your brother's playing, how, how, how happy about that? Yeah, no, pretty happy, I mean, it's, it's funny of us having, um, you know, two different teams, but if we were in the same team it would be a lot more fun, so maybe it's a good thing that we're in two separate teams, but yeah, no, it's, they're doing well, so it's good to, good to be able to watch them play. Good. What do you think the game's going like for the, the men's team here? They've, had a, they've been a pretty rocky road so far, but uh, they're up against a very physical and fast Ireland team. But they're a talented group of lads that have you know, only recently come together, so I, hopefully they'll gel in the, you know, in the coming years and they'll be a really, really tough squad to beat. Good. Um, do you think Scotland have, have played really well as individuals as well as a team? Absolutely. I think just, uh, just ironing a few things out. But, you know, they've, they've all been fantastic. Men's have really come on leaps and bounds. Same with mixed and women's as well. Perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. See you later. Yes. Scotland got a penalty now on their scoreline. Ireland with a four sub. Meaning that the player that's been sent off must stay off until the player gets off and then a new player can come on. Score there for Josh Lee. Scotland winger, great long ball, capitalised on the man down. (laughs) 
Scotland back in it now. Scotland, if there's not a, a win to come at the end of this game, will be very proud of their performance. Played very well compared to, to their game a few weeks back. Good score there. Um, very good score from Ireland using the feet work. Um, some would say it's what Ireland needed to get back on the front foot um, uh, and stay in touch with this game and, and keep themselves close with the scoreline and not let their foot off the gas too much. Um, Scotland potentially worried if that's what's coming of the game. Um, if that's what's gonna gonna keep happening every time Scotland score, Scotland just gonna look to, to press on now um, and and try and get another score to make to keep it level. Um, Finley Smith's brother there, Callum Smith, just just taking the ball there. Lewis Burns trying to sell the dummy, didn't quite work. Marshall McLeod taking it in. Finley Smith to Lewis Burns, goes long. Good touch. That's six. Unfortunate for Chris Rag. Ross Morris taking a tumble. We'll be back in a minute, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, unfortunate end to that game there ladies and gentlemen and um, we hope both players are okay um, we, we we know this is the end of the game for for Ireland v Scotland Ireland won by one touchdown um, great performance from both teams let's just um, hope that Ross Moyer on the wing is okay Ladies and gentlemen, a potential slight delay in the next game for obvious reasons. Um, so Ireland v Wales will be with us soon. Um, let's just hope that these players are okay. Thank <laughs> you. 
Players and officials, one minute warning. Players and officials, one minute. Players and officials, this is your 30 second warning. Please take to the field, they're uh, ready to play. 30 seconds. Players and officials, stand by. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Manchester. Um, thankfully, the, the injured player was able to get off the field safely, um, and best wishes to him. We now have Women's Open, England versus Wales. Uh, Wales in red, England in white and red. Good attack and play from Wales there, unfortunate against six.
England's strong attack there, unfortunately not able to get the score, just got to six touches on it. Score there from England, great well worked score, set up very well and capitalised on the, the man down. England is seven metres on now, trying to draw Wales out and get the attack going. Take it in, broken down, unfortunate for England. Good touch there from the link. England making some good yards here. Unfortunate. Touch there from the Welsh link, a uh, bit of miscommunication. Player thought she'd scored, player thought she was offside, player thought she had made a touch. Touch in the end. Well, good Paul Jack's coming back up the stairs. Injured player here for Wales, slowing the game down a little bit. On the backfield, we have Scotland women versus Ireland women. And here we have Wales versus Ireland, uh, England. Someone just blow me his cooking burgers and it smells really nice. Shoots a real heart from the Welsh team there, carrying their own player off um, to the back of the field so that it's, it's a little bit easier for the game to keep going. I'm um, just making sure she's okay. Good screw there from England, the winger. Uh, well worked. Um, stayed in that half for a long time and was ready to capitalise on that opportunity.
Wales attacking hard now, going with speed. Both England and Wales with very young women's open squads, um, younger than the rest of their teams, um, more than likely from the junior set up, but very good players out the back pass there. Unlucky not going quite to hand that second pass there, but the space is still on the wing. Good attack here from England. Going up the wing. That's a good one, two there from England. 3 4. Unlucky getting stopped short. Good score there from England. Playing the player offside and then attacking hard into the offside player. It's really good play when players attack the offside player and they capitalise on knowing what the game means. Really good. The, the the age of both these teams is, is rather young um, more than likely an awful lot of them played um, under 18 slash under 15s in Paris in 2019 in the final against each other which is, is quite nice um, and certainly within touch there's a lot of friendships that come from it a lot of people that, that you remember and you, you meet up in different places it's quite nice um, get, getting to see some old faces um, especially playing at the highest level but anyway, Wales back on the attack. Back down at that score zone. Unfortunately not able to capitalise just yet. Good touch there on the arm. Long ball goes wide. Touches in. That is six. That's unfortunate. Good well worked. Wales trying to get out of their own half now. Good play from the Wales. Fifth touch for England, attacking the offside player once again. Scoop through, looking for an open player. Too far back potentially. Touches in, that's unfortunate for England. Really well worked, scoop through. That's six. Wales now back on the attack, looking for that onside player, looking to attack them. Taking the ball slower, now with Spade. In, making the yards, aggressive. Over the line, scoop through. That's a good interception, cut zero on the line. Try saving interception there. I think she was 10 foot tall with that jump. Long ball wide. Take the speed. Trying to sub off. Bit of a messy sub for Wales. England, sorry. Good touch there from the mid. Wales turning a very aggressive defensive game. Scoop through again. Ball goes on. Lucky can't get the ball to hand. Wales roll ball on the 7 metre line. England set seven metres back, ready to attack downfield. Unfortunate for Wales there. England going wide, get it down. Good score from England there. That's that wide ball once again. We saw a lot today. Wide ball, wide space. Attacking well. We're slow to get back to halfway. Probably talking about a game plan. Wheels getting ready to tap hard and run fast. With speed, going down the right. Attacking that offside player, gaining a penalty. Wheels probably looking for an advantage there, referee made the right call. 
England almost at the scoreline. Touch on the seven, back on the scoreline now, England. Unlucky they're not able to get our feet quite quickly around. Wales near wing really open. Wales far wing even more really open. Unlucky, not able to get down quick enough. Fourth touch, fifth is coming. Two to make. All England want is the ball back and to attack hard. Wales just want a score. Unfortunate there for Wales, not able to get the ball down quite quick enough. Touch was in and able to get high. A lot of support from both teams here with the England women's over 30s on one side of the field and the Welsh open teams on the other side of the field. Both boxes still quite calm, not a lot of energy, but maybe they're just conserving it. Good ball off the ground there from the scooper. Trying to do that sub move again. Still quite messy. England probably looking to tidy that up for the second half of this game. Good run in there from England. It will get over the line with a clear run. That's unfortunate for Wales. They played really well. Wills back on the attack now, just over the 10 metre line. Wills attacking really flat. English defence just going up as a one. Using that unit defence really well. Not out of space in sight. England back on the attack now, trying to sub off, serious heads on, ready to go. England pushing wide now, with that wide defender, small trip, six again to England. Referees don't overly like the, the fact when players are shaking their fists for the, for the six again. Um, referees often believe that there is one referee on the field and, and that, that's how it should be. Um, but England very rightly so calling for six again. Good switch from England. Trying to draw the defenders out. Further to go back. Easier run. Wide play for England. Unlucky not able to get the hands to it. That's unfortunate from England. Playing really well. Wills coming in from really tight, pushing out wide. Close winger running really hard. That close winger just wants that ball wide. Overstep there from Wills. That's unfortunate. It's often hard when players aren't don't call touches very early. England coming off shouting. A bit excited about this. Playing really well. England getting close to the scoreline now. Unlucky there. England drawn the defence out again. Fifth touch. Lost the control there and dropped. It's unfortunate that. Not quite able to get the ball down there. Number 13 from England. 10 are flaring a little bit on the field, but that's okay.
turnover there from Wales. That's unfortunate. Wells down at the score line now, looking for a score. Draw the defence out. Winger sitting really wide on both sides. That's unfortunate, stepped the wrong way. A little bit of miscommunication. Unfortunate again. England's far side winger causing a lot of mischief for Wales. England on the attack now, slightly tidier sub move there. Wills looking to be a bit tired. Good line break from England there. That's fifth and final, no more for England. Looking to get close. Let's hope they can get it before the half time. Touch there. That's half time in this game. England up by four. Once again, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us today. Uh, we are at Manchester in Broughton Park. Uh, we have had a lot of touch rugby over the last few weeks, um, and today has been nonetheless. Still more to come for the rest of the day. Um, great game here, England v Wales. And just to inform you, the Scottish player in the previous game is okay. Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Manchester. We're at Broughton Park FC here for the final one and a half games of the Autumn International Series here between England, Scotland, Ireland and Wales. Uh, you've just been listening to Gregor Whiteman, who uh, is now off to go and wear yellow for the final time today. So you're stuck back with me. I'm Jack Harris. It's been a pleasure commentating for you today on the games that we've been able to. Apologies that we've not been able to commentate on every game today. But uh, we hope you have enjoyed the live feed either way. Uh, if you've uh, been watching, we are halfway through the final women's open game between England and Wales. We've got one more game after this coming up for you today, which is the mixed open game between England and Wales. Uh, it's been a wonderful game here so far. England very much dominating. 4-0 at half-time. And I think they're going to be very happy with that. Wales, very strong side, of course. Uh, newer players come into the squad as well. And uh, they're going to definitely want to get some scores on the doors uh, during this second 20 minutes.
So if you uh, want to know what's been going on throughout the day, I'll give you a few updates on scores, ladies and gentlemen. So uh, earlier today in the Women's Open, uh, Scotland just beat Wales 8-7. Uh, England uh, winning against Ireland 4-12. Uh, and England then went on to uh, beat Scotland as well. So England remaining unbeaten in this championship. Looking to keep it that way into the second half. Wales have been playing well. And uh, for a new squad, they've certainly uh, shown some of the more experienced players how good they could be in the future with some sparks of flair and great play that I'm sure they're going to want to capitalise on throughout the rest of the day. So as we look now to get ready for the second half of this game, Wales with the tap off, starting with their pod, including Joanne Jones. And number 12, Ellen Huxtable. Once again, we're seeing uh, Megan Jones here on this near side wing, defending against the England sub box, who uh, has been monumental out there. Uh, on the wing can be a lonely place playing as a winger when you've got to stay on the pitch at all times and uh, she's done a stellar job for Wales today let's see how they can capitalise so Ballot playing with the ball and Jones now accompanied by Masters adding some real pace here as England attempting the defence it's a lovely long pass that from Jones and well caught by Grace Bellamy Slightly floated though, so England had time to get there. Wales looking to use space as that's now fifth touch. And Jones alongside Huxtable. Going to take the touch there and uh, concede the turnover. But uh, they also give away the penalty for not giving the ball back. So uh, Wales marched further in this scenario. Bronte Sykes for England to M. Irons, who makes some great distance there for England. Bronte underneath, 24 for England. Doing very well on the wing as well. As you see now, Emily Rona Roper with number 13. Ooh, that was, I thought it might have been an injury there for the England player. But uh, hasn't quite happened on, so it's all good. Julia Rand's worth going down initially. But uh, England still in possession. Wales trying to hold tight as England come on the sweep. Slowed down by Wales. Are they advancing? It's a lovely play out to the side here. And Wales are giving away the penalty on this occasion for not advancing well enough in their seven. So England getting six more here. Raman Shepherd here receiving the ball, looking back. Oh, it's not held there by England. That's a great option, though. It's where, it's where the option was. And uh, England, unfortunately, not capitalising on that one. As Wales now, Jones going on to Huxtable with new set of legs now coming in. Wales needing to capitalise here, needing to add the pace to this box runoff move. As we see, King now, she was stellar in their previous game against Scotland. Really hitting some holes very, very well, setting up a number of scores. And she's going to look to continue to do that through this game. She's joined by Lucy Isaac here on the near side. And of course, Rachel Thomas Evans now guarding this near side wing for Wales. As England bring on the fresh legs. Mimi Patton in underneath. And uh, looking for the scoop through there. Mimi Pat Patton is going. She needs to find the pass. Is it, was it away in time? Has Abuthnot made that score? Doesn't look like it on this occasion, unfortunately. The pass is being given as 
No, pass is good, apologies. Um, fortunately, it sounds like uh, Sofa Buffnot has not made the grounding, has lost control of the ball there. So England not scoring again on this occasion as Wales, once again, adding pace up into the game. That is some lovely, lovely metres made that there by Rachel Stevens, working hard and fast. So Wales now need to keep this pace. Number 12, Ellen Huxtable with Jones. Jones looking for the space and that was a lovely line run there by Megan Jones. Pass was slightly behind but they will get six more. I think touched in flight by England there. It's a lovely line chosen by Stevens as we see Ellen Huxtable looking to make the change. Wales currently with five on the pitch. So just slowing things down slightly. England staying high. Touch made by Patton. In now. Ooh, it's a good dive that, but unfortunately not quite there before the touch from Ballot. Wales running out of touches here. It's tight from the England defence. Ballot. Oh, and Jones again had run a lovely line, but the pass was behind. Beautifully run line by Jones. Ballot just needed to get that pass a bit more in front as Jones ran onto it. And England now then, initially going direct through Patton. Through some, again, a, love, a lot of ground there made by uh, Danny Gregory and Sofa Buthnot. Who now comes off as we see M. Irons, Susanna Hudson and Emily Crow with Bronte Sykes. It's a sweet play, it's a lovely line and a long ball from England. Look at this, is the score good? Yes it is. That was a beautifully well set up move by England. The pod of four in the middle, all playing for London Scorpions. But that line run initially from Zana Hudson, absolutely epic. And the pass as well, off the left hand to find the winger in space. Wonderful, absolutely wonderful. Textbook play that from England. Wales then, now back in possession. King working closely with Huxtable. Referee Roger Neighbors is just going to have a word here. Touch is beginning to get a little physical. So we need to make sure that both teams are keeping that down so Rog just has a word another sweep of play King initially comes round but the wide ball is there for Wales again passed just slightly behind from Ellen Huxtable it's well gathered by Grace Bellamy so Wales still in possession here that was fifth touch though they've got to make something of this now King looking to go through the middle covered by Sykes and Crow. And England then received the possession. Crow, Hudson off the floor. Sykes now to Irons. Dumped well by Irons. Can they make some metres here? Hudson off to the winger. Well done there to make the metres. Rachel, uh, so as we see now, Ram Shepherd. Looking wide for England. Is it there? Oh, could the winger have made that? 81 now. Julia Unsworth can't quite find the space as the touch count still in England's favour. But uh, could not quite scoop through there for Unsworth. Wales then, as they drive to the box themselves, looking quite slow initially. And again, a bit of confusion there for Wales. And... Uh, Ooh, it's going to be ball to ground there. And that is not what they wanted. Wales trying to come off the box as well. Looking slightly tired out there as England coming again. Emily Rona Roper working well. And the space once again on the wing for England. And I think uh, initially there claim of a touch from Megan Jones but I think it was before the ball was caught by the England winger and England again another score up here it's been a long day for both sides and Wales certainly uh, looking a bit more tired than England at the moment 
few more players in the sub box for England as well but Wales adding the pace coming initially from Jones and of course Huxtable as it's dumped well Jones there slightly slow looking for the wraparound pass Ooh, bit of a clattering there unfortunately a buff knot trying to make the touch from Seren Lockwood who is on the ball now with Jones who runs round the gap might be there needs to go wide pass is late from Wales unfortunately they knew where the space was but couldn't quite get it there on that occasion as we see England attacking now a buff knot working with Gregory off to Patton good meters made by this direct drive from England Wales having to work hard to stay in the defense double touch there from the Wales defense it slowed it down though well enough that England have got to think here Gregory receiving the pass back but six touches used by England oh it's not what they needed for Wales there number six unfortunately for Wales Lucy Isaac not quite gathering the ball well enough there Wales now need to defend this the gonna want to keep a good set here as we again now see Patton on the ball alongside Laura Cochran a buff knots run a great line there but uh, Welsh defense has come over very well they're very tight there in the middles a buff knot and Patton alongside Gregory Gregory's on the sweep line Gregory looking for the pass and made wonderful pass off by Gregory to Cochrane great visuals there wonderfully saw the space initially well defended by Wales they kept the tight middles kept the tight spot but uh, the snipe having to come in from the link to cover Gregory meant that uh, two on one on the outside there and it was just one pass for Gregory off to Cochrane and a lovely score lovely to see Wales if they can get a score on the door I'm sure that's what they're going for now it's what they really want as uh, we see King working well with Stevens alongside Masters Stevens and Masters can't quite work that one space isn't there through the middle and last touch now so they're gonna have to work something up here King looking for the switch but uh, Wales natural game plan make England start with the ball as far away from the touch box as possible as Sykes dumps irons now again cutting some lovely lines ball was a bit too long on the floor there for England that isn't what they want they're going direct again as we see Hudson getting the ball away very well there to Crow Hudson now well gathered by Irons dumped Crow looking for options is the winger option there it is once again and uh, a lovely lovely play it's a very good direct drive from England worked very well between Crow Sykes Irons and Hudson to the point where Wales were scrambling as they got towards their seven meter still remaining too tight and the space there on the wing um, it's a well played move by England just looking for where the space is as the drive comes and uh, keeping themselves all as options for a pop-off pass to get it into space come on then Wales let's see what Wales can bring as we now have Jones working in now with Platt and Huxtable Jones again short setup Platt on the run well covered that by England Platt needed to look back inside there with Jones now and Lockwood Lockwood makes a dump initially Jones on the run and I think Jones initially looking for possible offside but not going to happen on this occasion England 
They need to be careful here. They've got themselves a bit caught there. It's not really how they should be starting a drive. As we see now, Rona Roper on the ball, working well. It's come off the foot of Wales, so England starting with six again. Unsworth, Roper's there underneath. Looking a bit of a laboured drive from England, so Wales are dealing with it well. It's a lovely hole run by England. Uh, that's well covered there. That's wonderful defence from, uh, again, Megan Jones, who's made sure that the England winger can't go anywhere. Has held her ground very, very well. Um, and nothing coming of that. But a bit of a mix-up here for Wales. They did not want that. It's a half court in that case, so turnover. Dummy half, of course, can't get touched. As we uh, see now, the new pod for England coming on. Might just be able to work it themselves at the moment between Gregory and Cochran, but now joined by Patton and Abuthnot. Patton now looking to set up. Sweep coming, but it's taken back from Cochran, looking for the wide ball. Oh, that's unfortunate. Katie Fielding was there. Pass not quite coming off. Using the sweeper as a dummy. So the space was there on the far side for England. Wales now looking like they're injecting a bit of pace into play. This is what they need. Lovely meters made that by Thomas Evans. As again, we now see Ballot working closely. Ballot now on the ball, looking to get the pass away. The pass has been gone away. But, ah, oh, no, apologies. Fielding did make the touch there. I think there was initial possibility that we didn't think she had. Referee Patrick Birchall making sure. England now. Be interesting to see if they go for the direct drive or they're going to the box. They are going to the box. A Buthnot now looking to get off to Gregory. Buthnot takes it on again. As we see Irons there. Hudson and Crow outside her. Sykes now with Crow. Looking to scoop on the fifth touch. Line run by Sykes. Irons again looking to hit the hole. Well covered by Jones from the Welsh side. Wales likely to go to the box. Again, getting slightly caught here in the middle. England doing very well to hold them where they are. Need to be careful on these passes here. Ballot. And now we've got Bellamy working closely with Huxtable. Looking for the wide pass, is it there? It's played by England. So it is six more, which is what Wales are going to want. They're going to want the six here for... They're going to want the six here on the seven. Now it's important they set themselves up well here. Do not get caught too close out. As we again see the sweeper line coming in. Oh, attempted dive there. It was wonderful play from Seren Lockwood just about covered by England but um, a lovely dive from her nonetheless as again Lockwood out now to Stevens Stevens makes the dump oh not quite apologies but again in, in Wales going to get six more England need to be advancing more in the seven Lockwood with Stevens and Huxtable And they need to be moving forward. Hucks the ball. Is it going to be a score there? Emily Irons coming in for the touch. But England once again giving away the penalty. They need to more forward momentum in this seven metres. It's not enough anymore to just be going forward. Someone in the team needs to go and get the touch. That's two in the seven for England. Need to be careful here. As we see. Tempted back and forth from Lockwood with Stevens Lockwood back to Stevens looking for the space here covered by England second phase now Lockwood and Stevens but it's covered by England Wales just struggling to get that final score in 
England coming to the box. No one's on the floor to get it. It's slowed down. Hudson, Irons, Winger, almost caught. Rona Roper looking for the space on the outside. Fielding with her. Rona Roper back into fielding. Raman Shepherd there working. On the outside here, Unsworth, Wales though, giving away the penalty. This is not what Wales need. They need to be working hard here. Unsworth initially coming round on the sweep. They can afford to slow it down. Ram Shepherd making woo. <laughs> uh, Welsh player offside once again. So England getting the six on the seven. Wales, come on Wales, keep the discipline. It's a good pass back that. Rona Roper alongside Unsworth again they've got the touches to use here they're just going to wait until the space opens up Welsh players now coming out to them Unsworth Rome Shepherd looking for the wide ball can she get it away oh it's behind fielding right option not quite executed in the way England will have wanted Wales now coming to the box Last touch here, made by England. And that, ladies and gentlemen, brings us to the end of this Women's Opens game between England and Wales. Wonderful game to watch, of course. Some lovely scores from England. Wales, will they be happy with that? I'm sure after a long day that uh, they know they would have tried their hardest against the very experienced English side. Uh, but eventually ending 7-0 to England. Stay with us, ladies and gentlemen. We've got one more game for you this afternoon. Five minutes' time you will watch, once again, England versus Wales in the Mixed Open Championship. Stay with us for the final game here in lovely, sunny Manchester. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, to sunny Manchester. It's been a lovely day here, to say the least. We're at Broughton Park FC, and we've been playing games in round two of the Autumn International Touch Series between England, Wales, Ireland and Scotland. It's been a lovely day, absolutely cracker. Uh, we've had some wonderful, wonderful touch here, and it's been brilliant to see just the difference between teams since two weeks ago, how much they've come on just from being able to play with one another. Very lucky that we can do that now, of course, after the year we've had, and I know for a fact that everyone is very much enjoying just being able to play touch again in this kind of weather. Uh, long may we be able to continue this. Uh, 
it's a lovely sport for those of you who are just getting into it for the first time hopefully you can see how uh, great an atmosphere we create with InTouch and for those of you more experienced in the game hopefully you've enjoyed seeing some high level competition and uh, for any of you not based in the British Isles uh, we hope that uh, we get to see you as well soon because it'd be lovely to get as many international games as we are able to uh, in the future. If you're watching from overseas and want to say hi, feel free to do so. It's lovely to know who's with us. But back to the game in hand, ladies and gentlemen. One more game for you today, and that is the mixed open between England and Wales. Uh, was a cracker of a game uh, two weeks ago. Both sides playing extremely well. Wales with some newer, fresher faces, and England as well, for that matter. But of course, a lot of history. These two uh, semi final at the European Championships in Nottingham in 2018 went to drop off. Wales just about coming off better in that to play Scotland in the final. But yes, been a wonderful, wonderful day. These two have been top two throughout the competition. And. Uh, was interesting earlier England actually losing to Scotland uh, earlier in the day and Wales um, having some good games themselves I haven't got the score for them against Scotland today unfortunately but um, yeah it was an interesting game earlier between England and Scotland uh, where Scotland came off better at 8-6 but here we are ladies and gentlemen final game of the day England playing in white and red from left to right and Wales playing from right to left going to be a wonderful game hopefully here as we now see Goff playing well with Crossley sweeper coming in here from England from number six Jamie Ironside looking very tight here with Pemberton on his outside as they look to set up now going back the other way Crossley feeding the ball gaps there and England already on the scoreboard wonderful finish that from England from Daisy Pank really really well set up initially from Jamie Ironside looking for the wide space there Wales uh, defence had to snipe uh, but that left the 2-1 uh, one, a two, a two on one on the side there but here we now seeing Wales as we've got Sam Court in here playing with Emilio Gatarola and he's dived unfortunately for the incorrect line but uh, it is difficult on this pitch ladies and gentlemen the 7 metre lines are actually solid uh, come off the rugby union pitch there the 22 metre lines for rugby union pitch for those of you into that as well so that's why uh, there's a bit of confusion going on but Gatarola sweep now coming in from court space is there available had Anna Melmoth on the outside but uh, they've used their six here on this occasion so England now be interesting to see whether they go to box or go direct and uh, it's going to be a turnover there a bit of confusion between Isabel Hobson and Alice Summers England are now going to have to D this out as Brooks comes on for England Hayworth outside him but we've got Wales number 10 Gatarola 14 coming round wasn't quite there on this occasion once again going to court Gatarola coming in on the sweep looking back in court can't wait, quite make it there but uh, penalty is given against England for not advancing court and Gatarola working in the middle here as 14 comes round on the sweep looking back in now long ball is the space there not quite on this occasion possibly looking for number three Amelia Reese out here on the far left wing for Wales but they come back to this left hand side court looking for Reese pass does not go away though um, it's well played that from Wales trying to uh, use the width as much as possible as we now see Brooks working closely with Goff and Summers now making the dump Brooks now on the ball Hobson underneath as they go to the box Mayle now coming wide alongside Maynard 
misses. Working very well there. May all trying to go. That was Charlie Thompson. Close with him. Maynard now trying to stretch the defence. It's a wonderful pass that from Thompson. Mayo looking back in. Thompson's there. And the score is going to be given. Wonderful, wonderful pot pass play that from England. And uh, fortunately, I think a Welsh player's got hit a bit badly there in the attempted touch. But uh, very, very well played that from England. As they now go 2-0 up in this game with just over four minutes played. Wales then working the centre. Joe Kruger-Williams here receiving the ball now. Extremely experienced player. Will look to try and direct things now in the middle. Working closely with Stefan Prether. There's a loss of control on the floor unfortunately there for Wales. Not quite what they needed. Maynard now. Brooks underneath. Mayle going wide. Trying to get the long ball. Out. Two. Number 12. Lauren Torley. But again, loss of control there on the floor. Mistakes creeping in for both sides. Kruger Williams now going to receive it. But no, initially. Going to number 12. Prether. Number five now, Stefan Crimp looking to set up Prethuk on the sweep. It's a dummy. Kruger Williams looking for that long ball, gets it away. But a touch has come in well from Isabel Hobson. Ball was slightly behind Catherine Jones there. Needed a bit further in front, but it's great vision from Kruger Williams. To say, extremely experienced player for Wales in the mixed open division. As Kruger Williams goes again, looks for the wide ball. But the pass is late on this occasion. Kruger Williams already doing some great work in the centre here as we see Pennington and then dumped by number 13 Isabel Hobson and a cross lead but working with Pennington Pennington looking and the space is there for Jamie Ironside again it's this pace that England have got coming from their own area especially if they're not going to the sub box and uh, Wales just unfortunately could not keep up there. They've been on the pitch for a long time, that pod. And as we see now, Wales uh, wanting to definitely get back into this game. 3-0 to England. Number 10, Gatarola now, once again, in the centre. With Court. 14 running the sweep line. Out wide there is Anna Melmoth again, waiting for the play. Sweep coming from Gatarola. Space is there for him. Wide ball. Will they get this one good? And finally Wales on the scoreboard. Lovely pass from Gatarola as he made the space there off the left hand. And the space was just there out on the wing for the Welsh winger. And it's now 3-1 then to England. As we see England now coming back. As we see Torley, male underneath. Maynard now working with male. Brooks there on the wing, wearing two. Maynard waiting for the defence to come to him. Got to keep going. Torley underneath. Potential short play. It's a bit tight here. And uh, yeah, I don't think uh, Greg Cropper, their referee, hadn't quite seen that uh, it was initially played by uh, Maynard and uh, it was a loss of control technically and forward. So England now having to defend. Good work that from number 30 for England, Megan Pemberton, who's defending this Welsh box. As we see, attempted ejected pace by Sam Court. Working with Crimp. 14 as well there with him Pemberton in there for the touch though and six touches used and 
and Wales are going back 10 metres for not giving the ball back immediately but we'll see England in possession now Tawley again working with Brooks Maynard Hobson underneath there on the wing holding it well for England very deep there Anna Crossley now looking to inject the pace Hobson underneath and that of course is Jamie Ironside working with Crossley Penning uh, Pennington lovely line and Crossley just easily there in the space initially created by the injection speed from Pennington uh, a Welsh link there had to snipe unfortunately on that occasion to just lead the two on one in the end it was an easy touchdown for Crossley Four one to England then. Kruger Williams out now to Stefan Prether. Kruger Williams and looking in here, Prether trying to find the space. It's not there. Covered by Pennington and Ironside. It's a quickie play here. Preetha looking for the wide ball. Is it there? The forward pass is going to be given here, though, on that occasion. Preetha just not quite getting the ball back well enough. And uh, England now in the possession that they've got. Working to the box. Hobson once again underneath. Summers asking for it. Hobson underneath. Ed Haywood there now picking up the ball. Thompson outside. Gone back in now. Thompson's there. Numbers were there. But uh, it's well covered that by Wales. And uh, they'll get the ball back. Angus Goff here working with Thompson and Haywood but we're going to come back here for the Welsh being offside Goff not happy about the challenge on him there initially but uh, switch coming in here Summers now playing this near side link Thompson and Goff Goff receives it back on the quickie play and the space is there straight away but uh, touch is made just there by the Welsh defence number nine Fraser Dia up now making the touch again initial quickie play Thompson looking for where the space is well covered by Melmoth needs to get back but uh, Melmoth a bit scrambled there hadn't made the line six again for England Thompson Goff Goff and Thompson working well. Goff receives it back. Thompson. And the score is good. Wonderful play between the two of them there. Initial quickie setup. Space wasn't there for Goff. Oh. But uh, in this case, I f forgive me, ladies and gentlemen, the pass off the floor from Thompson was forward to Goff. So. Hard touch given against England. Pemberton. Wales now with the set of six. 14. Gatarola looking wide. Who's he got outside? Seren Carson playing in the link there. Oh, and the pass is not quite good enough for Catherine Jones there out on the wing again. Strong hold for Wales. Oh, but England might be through here. Oh, Goff couldn't quite make it on this occasion. But uh, again, another play where defence expecting the team to go to the box. Hasn't quite happened. Brooks now. Haywood in the middle. Mayo's coming round on this near side. Mayo on the ball with Brooks taking the time, waiting for players to come with. Quickie play. Mayo there now. Maynard's joined them. 
and looks like also joined by Torley on the far left hand side initial short play looking for the loop ball is it there no it isn't for England on this occasion so again both sides looking to play the second phase ball here quite well short initially set up by England and immediately passing off to see uh, if the gap was there especially if you've got defenders on that side sniping in and shutting the space but uh, Wales now coming into box Gattarola on the ball number three Amelia Reese, near side winger for Wales number nine Fraser Deer Kruger Williams now fifth touch gonna need to do something Stefan Crimp on the ball pass might have been away was not away on this occasion so uh, England receiving possession now Tawley Hobson once again underneath Brooks Bit of a, oh Brooks might be in here as well England really working well on this near side as we now see England driving well here comes Pennington looking for the space there for Pemberton wasn't quite there though Ironside and Pemberton, uh, Pennington once again linking up well Pennington up high Kruger Williams for Wales dumping the ball Deer Pemberton making the touch there on Wales attempted ejected pace here from the Welsh side needing to get out of the pitch Prethurk now there with the ball trying to get round Pennington is the ball away it was away in time no it wasn't Wales again finding themselves with very little space needing to work what they can Pennington now underneath for Crossley Hobson off the floor for number 23 Daisy Pank Summers then Hobson as we see Goff Hayward Thompson underneath looking to scoop on the fifth touch switch is there and no touch made in that case by Wales and England once again excellent play from the English side Goff initially finishing that off but created by Thompson who uh, received the ball on the final touch knew he needed to scoop and um, set up the switch play lovely play that from England as uh, we now see England extending their lead to 5 1. Gattarola working with Kruger Williams. Initial counties play. Kruger Williams and Gattarola just having a chat about what they want to set up here as they come round. Counties. Kruger Williams on the outside. Covered well again by England. Maynard and Mayo there. Kruger Williams working well is the space open here it isn't for England but uh, Wales will be happy at least that England having to work now from the far side from their box Maynard Brooks Tawley Maynard again Brooks back off Hobson underneath Tawley gonna have to go again to make the touch here there's Pank looking to make the meters and Wales really struggling to keep up with the pace there of the English drive off the box so you now see Pank going for the first touch and Pennington with Crossley Crossley again going for the dive wrong line unfortunately again so many lines on this pitch lovely attempts though from Crossley as we see Ironside now Crossley making the dump wanting it back but no Pennington initially goes away touch though excellently made there from 14 from Wales I'm sorry I don't have a name for number 14 but uh, came in there just at the right, no right moment for them Crossley going in quickie coming back Ironside can he do something with this was the ball away in time I think it was from England and England once again scoring off a lovely set piece move Crossley initially on the dump 
Pennington just looking for that inside ball there and uh, Ironside wonderful wonderful way to cut a line in there through the middle 6-1 to England as just under two minutes now until half time here Wales will want to get on the board now add one to the one earlier which was a lovely score and uh, hopefully they're going to want to score a few more like that as well Stefan Crimp working in the middle there well covered that by Pemberton I think initially Wales thought they might have got that one and uh, number 12 then Stefan Prethep not quite being able to do much here again they kept it to this near side to try and force England have to work hard Ed Hay with their sword an opportunity with the Welsh defence possibly offside but called back here by referee Nielsen Patrick Haywood now is looking though Pemberton there Thompson Goff initially to Summers but back in looks like England might be going direct here Thompson to Goff Summers underneath Thompson and Goff really linking up well here Goff now looking for the scoop options there Summers can they get the ball away but it's well played that by Wales and because they've regathered it um, that is zero touch there and they get their set of six straight off it was wonderful play that from England though well linked up Wales doing what they needed to to keep them out and they've caught the ball Prether trying to make the metres but as we hear the half time hooter that will conclude the first 20 minutes of this game England 6-1 up at half time we'll be back with you very shortly for the final 20 minutes here at the Autumn International Touch Series Good afternoon everyone for the final time here at Borton Park FC in Manchester on a lovely sunny evening here. It's got to, it's got to say the weather has been impeccable today. 
let alone for England, but for Manchester as well. Uh, but uh, I hope you've been able to enjoy our live coverage of the competitions today. We've got a final 20 minutes now between England and Wales in the Mixed Open Championship. We've seen some brilliant games today. We've seen some teams really come on from where they were two weeks ago. And uh, it's testament just to how much better your play can become just from gaining that experience of playing with one another. And after the year and a half we've had, that hasn't really happened. So uh, it's been wonderful to see. And uh, we hope that all the players and participants have enjoyed it as much as we have. 20 minutes left now. England leading 6-1 against Wales. Uh, England very much uh, leading on a structured play. Their set pods, they know the, the moves they're going to be pulling to try and score on the Welsh defence. Wales looking slightly more laboured after a long day, but still playing well, led by Kruger Williams. And they are definitely going to want to try and close the gap here in this second half and go out with a bang. And uh, we'll see what they can do there. Wales now playing left to right in the full red. England in the white and red on the right hand side will defend the tap off here. Uh, quick mention to the referees we've had here today. Thank you to all who have taken part. Um, special mention to the three referees we've got on a game at the moment. Uh, Kevin Hobbs, who's kind of stood in the middle. Neil St. Patrick is uh, a near side referee at the moment and Greg Cropper on the far side uh, doing a brilliant job at uh, officiating this game at the moment and um, I hope that they are enjoying it as much as we are too. As we hear the Hoot end for the final time, 20 minutes left in this game and 20 minutes left in the Autumn International Series between England, Wales, Scotland and Ireland. As we see Wales now, Kruger Williams in the middle here with 14, looking to set it up now. 14 coming back. Stefan Crimp there as well, getting underneath, looking for Kruger Williams. Crimp looking for the long ball. Melmoth, good attempted score. Pemberton looking for space there. 14. And uh, attempted interception by England means that Wales will get six more. Crimp working with 14. Crimp gets it back on the quickie play. Looking for the wide ball. Defensive touches there made by Thompson and Goff. As you see Crimp. And 14. Crimp now. Crimp now looking to score in the middle here but at the moment Goff and Thompson holding the middle well Crimp 14 picks up looking for the wide ball is it there number 18 on the outside for England and the ball is down by Wales wonderful pass wonderful score from Wales there let's look at that again initial quickie play set up and uh, the long ball from 14 on to Annie Kate Lewis who was there straight off and got the ball down before Pemberton could get the touch in and we're now at 6-2 Wales will really enjoy that and hopefully that will cheer them up for the second half as we see England tally with Brooks underneath Mayle now on the ball Maynard outside him Maynard initially going for the sweep Mayle looking for the ball uh, Brooks initially thinking he was in, but fifth touch made. Fifth touch now, so England going to have to do something with this. Look wide initially. But uh, Maynard not being able to do much with that one. As they take Wales away from the box. Wales then. Looking to sub as they come. Saren Carson. Initially dumping. Gatarola there too. Catherine Jones there playing underneath for Wales. Fraser Deer. Kruger Williams unexpectedly having to make the touch there. Is the ball available? Oh, poor pass by uh, number eight, unfortunately, Sam Court. But they're making metres, Wales, and uh, hopefully it will work out for them very nicely. 
England now, likely to go to the box, yes, as Mayo comes round, trying to inject some pace. Kruger Williams is there though, Hobson into Brooks, looking at Torley but dumping himself. Hobson, Pank now, Hobson again, out wide here to Ironside. Pennington picks up, what can he do? Oh, Kruger Williams is not going to enjoy that. Oh, no. Oh, and uh, Kruger Williams has been let off there massively. Has uh, dropped by Anna Crossley on the line, which is such a shame. And uh, yes, I say, I think Wales are going to be very happy with that one. And Wales are now getting six more as a result of the hard touchdown, Kruger Williams. Hopefully you won't remember that one uh, too much. Apologies, ladies and gentlemen. I've seemed to have gained the hiccups. But Wales, outside ball. Um, right idea there for them. That's where the space was. But England now get, getting the ball back. As we see, Ironside taking it in. With Pennington. And Crossley there with them as well. Mentioned this earlier. This pod for England includes Crossley and Pank, which means that England currently playing with two male players, two female players, which is totally allowable within the rules. Of course, you only need one male player on. Um, so it's wonderful playing a testament to how well this England side can play together. And wonderfully set up there by Pennington and Ironside for Crossley to have the space to score. As we now see 7 2 to England. Wales not being too happy with the level of touches at the moment. Malmuth initially asking the question to referee Kevin Hobbs. But Kruger Williams now with number five, Stefan Crimp. Sweeper play coming here, looking for the pass off to Prether. Not quite coming off, but we'll get six more here as England offside on the seven. Prether, Malmuth underneath. Prether looking to score there, going himself. It's a lovely diving play, but once again, not much gap there between Goff and Thompson. Hayward making the touch. Out to Crimp. Prethurk wants it back. <laughs> Excuse me, ladies and gentlemen, for uh, the hiccups I seem to have uh, developed. I'm getting too excited by this game, is what's going on here. Summers now with Goff underneath. Thompson adding the pace in. Hobson once again underneath. Mail back into Torley, who's made some meters here. And uh, Isabel Hobson initially going down for England. They're not quite sure what happened. But a uh, hard touch given against Kruger Williams. And uh, it will now be six more for England here as Maynard goes to Brooks. Dumps for Mayle. Maynard having it back. Maynard dumps Welsh. Short play initially. Mayo, not quite sure where he's going. Torley now in the middles here. Torley appealing for Wales, not moving up fast enough, but she's not going to get that anytime soon. <laughs> and uh, Brooks and Mayo working well now. Maynard's underneath. Mayo looking to score. Hasn't made it, but the uh, penalty is given against Wales for not advancing. this uh <laughs> apologize again for these hiccups i'm trying to get rid of them <laughs> oh there we go um but in that time wales will now play with five players for the rest of uh, for four sets as uh we see number five steph and crimp being sent to the sin bin for wales as a result of his back chat to the referee 
so it's six on five at the moment in England's favour Maynard looking for the space Orley but touch is made there by Melmoth Brooks Mail sweep coming round from Maynard there it is he just needs to get the wide pass away needed to look right as now Kruger does not look happy on the floor there at the moment don't quite know what's happened but um, uh, might need to see that one back again I'm not quite sure what it's done possible he's holding his hand or fingers I've got a funny feeling he might have just done a d dislocation or something similar on his hand we won't know for a while in the meantime England again playing with six against Wales is five but it's well covered by Wales in the middles England with this advantage need to be looking wider than this oh what an exception here goes number 12 Preethuk can he make it Brooks and Mail after him they're not going to get there though interception from Preethuk wonderful wonderful Lee done by Preethuk and uh, tell you what he's earned a rest after that blimey and uh, Wales well, still going to have to play with five for a bit longer but that is that was not expected in the slightest England will be kicking themselves about that one wonderfully done wonderfully done from Wales um, Preethuk in particular of course reading the play beautifully well as we now see 7-3 to England Pennington Hobson underneath Pennington asking it back iron side looking for the wide ball to Pemberton touch not made unfortunately by the Welsh defence and England immediately coming back into it as we now see 8-3 to England Wales now will get their six players back on the pitch as Crimp comes back to his sub box it's what Wales needed now as we see Gattarola linking 14 making some metres Gattarola now he's going to need options well covered by Crossley for England. That's a roller there then. Seren Carson on the link here. Oh, it's a lovely long pass. Look at that. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, passes forward, but as England offside was the first defence in that occasion. Wales now getting the ball back. Wales then can they pull something of this sweeper coming around 14 well covered by Isabel Hobson 14 though never uh, in control of that one so England getting the ball back and injection of pace from Ironside then Pennington Hobson looking for Crossley wonderfully added pace here from England Summers now Crossley is gone but Hobson is underneath Goff Haywood wanted it on the switch but uh bit of confusion there between them Goff is there there's uh, Pemberton also defending this near side alongside Hayward Thompson Goff touch made by Summers but Wales now coming number 11 for Wales looking for the scoop now Kruger Williams oh, oh and just needed that pass Stafford Adams there trying to make something of that England now back in possession going direct by the looks of it as we see Goff dumping Summers now Goff underneath Haywood's on his right looking for options passes away first Summers is there in the middle dump is made 
can Thompson make something of this? No, and a uh, late pass there from Thompson as well. So, uh, penalty given against England. It's Melmoth now taking it forward. Wales needing to get the pace back in. So, D Dafford Adams working well. 14 again with now. Working with Crimp and Court. Crimp on the ball, looking, weaving, finding holes. On their last touch, of course, that's why uh, they were looking to try and pull something off that. Swing Carson there, trying to be an option as much as possible, but the space was squeezed out. As England come, going to box, Summers to Goff, slow, or oh, loss of control that by Summers on the floor, rare, a rare mistake. And uh, England scrambling now, trying to get on for the defensive play. Crimp. Slowing it down. They've got the options. Court. To 14. Court. Crimp. Crimp. Looking wide. It's a lovely ball. Oh, the head, unfortunately, though, from Ka for Katrin Jones. Wonderful vision again by Crimp. That's where the space was. And uh, it's a shame that one didn't quite come off because it was a wonderful setup from Wales. Brooks then for England, as we see Torley and Maynard. Mayo adding the pace. Maynard to Brooks. Brooks dumping. Maynard now driving. Direct drive through the middle. Gonna have to work hard. Brooks is looking for the space. Is Mayo got it? Okay, so. On that occasion, uh, touch, last touch was initially made by Wales, but we've got offside player in the middle. W Wales really struggling to deal with the direct drive from England. Maynard then, Tawley wrapping Brooks. Brooks, is it there now? And we are going to get a score again. What we've got there, ladies and gentlemen, is a wonderful setup play as uh, Maynard coming round, noticing the two on one and. Isabel Hobson is there straight away with the space on the outside. I think Wales feel slightly aggrieved by that, if possible a late pass, but uh, referee Nielsen Patrick making it very clear he was happy the ball was away. And uh, Wales can't afford to just stand there and uh, continue to appeal the decision. But they're coming back now between Kruger Williams, Melmoth, working very well, of course, also Gadarola's out there on the far side and Preethurk with that beautiful intercepted try earlier Gatarola Preethurk Kruger Williams can't make it diving touch by Pank just made Preethurk ball out the back can Kruger Williams make that it's a late pass unfortunately that would have been a lovely finish though that ball out the back from Preethurk was something to behold and uh, very cheeky to try and pull that one off and here we go then England looking to go direct Pennington through onto Ironside and cross the Ironside again Pennington's on his outside they've got two on one here looking back in Ironside Crossley's there Pennington wrapping around Crossley has dumped it on the wrong line <laughs> there are too many lines on this pitch I tell you ladies and gentlemen but I think Crossley's going to be let away with that because Wales once again with the direct drive just offside. Really, really struggling to deal with the pace of England here in the direct drives. Crossley looking to engage the Welsh defence. They need to keep going. Fifth touch then. Crossley, but uh, touched by Gruger Williams. Interesting here to see what the decision is. Kruger Williams initially claiming the touch, and I think now the touch is given. Not sure what the conversation about possible referee initially thought he was offside, not sure. Or either way, that is six touches used by England. 
so Kruger Williams receiving the ball back Gattarola now Melmoth Gattarola again Kruger Williams but it's going to be an off the mark for Wales initially uh, not feeling the first touch as Pemberton looking to go quickly here for England there's now Pennington trying to look to find some gaps Pank on his right Crossley on his left and uh, Ironside here on his outside Ironside then off the floor Pennington initially looking to give it back was it there Oh, possible wrong decision that by Pennington it looked like Ironside had plenty of space there on the outside it's Wales then their turn to come and attack on this one very well slowed down here by England oh no and see that's what happens Wales just trying to force a bit too much there uh, number four for Wales Carson couldn't quite gather that was unexpected past that from the Welsh players but as we see now return to the pitch for Goff Hobson underneath as England bring on the new legs Summers and this is Thompson going where he can Space shut down by Melmoth. <laughs> Hayward. Apologies for the hiccups once again. <laughs> Hayward. Goff. Summers underneath now. Goff. What can he do? Well covered by the Welsh defence. And that fifth touch. Only one left to use now for England. Goff again. But, ladies and gentlemen, that will conclude today's events here at Borton Park FC with England finishing victorious here in this mixed open game against Wales. Wonderful evening and a wonderful game of touch to watch from both sides. I think uh, England will be happy that Wales maybe not as much, but uh, did what they could. And... Uh, it's a great way to finish the day today as well. We hope you have enjoyed our coverage of the Autumn International Series. That in concludes International Touch within the British Isles for this year. Uh, if you're looking to want to watch International Touch, uh, there is, of course, later in the year, the Club Championships on the 4th of December in Spain and uh, in early October as well senior championships out in Portugal as well from an England touch perspective uh, we've still got the elite men's women's series happening in uh, October later than normal as a, as a result of the time we had available and of course then once again we will then see the start of the university national touch series uh, unfortunately those events will not be live streamed later this year but uh, keep an eye out for that as well we hope you've enjoyed our coverage today. It's been a pleasure to commentate for you. Uh, you've listened to Gregor Whiteman uh, from Scotland on a couple of games. And myself, Jack Harris. We apologise again that we couldn't get a commentator for every game today. But uh, either way, we hope you've enjoyed our live feed and we hope to see you again soon. Thank you very much for tuning in. Bye-bye.